let's crack open a beer and share some thoughts. <laughs> Welcome to Opinions, and we are about to embark on our fantasy pub crawl, mate. It's going to be a pretty awesome pub crawl, I reckon. It, it is. We've got 16 stops between us yes. that, that we're going to get to. Yeah. Do you reckon there's any duplicates? Um, possibly, but I'm not sure. Maybe duplicates from reserve lists. Okay. Possibly. I know you've put a hell of a lot of thought into how you've chose your, yeah. your eight. I like this. Um, thanks to listener and current number one fan, Paul, at UNRCD, for suggesting the idea. Uh, I know you was a little bit hesitant at the end of the last show that I just threw it open to the listeners yes. to choose <laughs> the, the theme for this week's show, but it's worked. It has worked very well, so thank you very much, Paul. And also, thanks to James Gammon Barron for suggesting um, our three most memorable beer experiences. And I think they, these questions all sort of merge into a fantasy thing as well. So yeah, yeah. we've had a few different flavours we, we to this question. We, we have, and it's going to be it's going to be fun diving into them. However, it is a hot night, Steve. It is. So we're recording this on the Monday as usual. I think this is the start of the heat wave. By the time you listen to this, we could be reaching peak peak heat wave. Heat wave. To this yet. So we are going to kick off with an American pale ale. That's uh, couldn't ask for anything more. To be honest with you, cheers. So I've dived straight in on this lovely Brew York Kai Juice, American Pale Ale at 5.5%. Oh, that's tasty. That's fruity on the nose. It's a bit of bit of pithy orangeness, and it's bitter at the end as well. There's a hint of dankness in that. There is a little bit of dankness. Well. So which makes me wonder what beer number two might be like if there's a bit of dankness well, yeah, in this. Yeah, I mean, um, I'm just checking because uh, Lee at Brew York was grateful enough to well to we were grateful us, uh, well, well, we yeah, were grateful gracious enough I suppose yeah. uh, and we were grateful yeah to um, to send us 24 beers 11 different varieties 24 beers all in 440 mil cans which I know we were quite vocal about last yes. time round as, as, as well uh, and he sent us uh, copious amounts of supporting notes as well uh, and I'm just trying to find the notes about this one because I'm pretty sure that yeah this is um only packaged two weeks ago, so it's kind of as, as fresh as. Well, it's got. I tell you a, what, the carbonation, the carbonation on this, and we'll get on. We won't. We won't. We we will still get onto the four forty mil cans because some of the beers we've got are worthy of a bit of a mention, right? Yeah. About the four forty cans. Can, canned on the twenty eighth of June. About oh, so. he's going to send us old shit. Thanks, Lee. <laughs> Not even July. Um, but the beer's got. I mean, my beer's got almost a two finger head on it at the moment. It's lovely. It's beautifully balanced beer. It is. I mean, and you know, five five point five percent. And again, I, I, I suppose we, we will dive in and out of this four forty thing uh, again. I think because the beers very much lend themselves to that. Yeah. But but this is one that that, that possibly I want more of. Um, I would still err on the side of starting the three thirties, but um, on a hot night like this, I'm, I'm, it's not like I'm not going to drink it all. No. Um, now, Brew York did used to do 330s, and they've recently changed the 440s. Yeah. And I, I, I asked Lee, uh, I, I DM'd him today and, and asked him um, a, a question, but he's not come back yet. So Okay, well, he's got time. So, you know, and if he listens to the show, you can always get in, in on bittery lingerness. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> Lee, Lee, use Lee, the hashtag yeah. opinions. <laughs> Let us know. Uh, but no, first of all, yes, we are very grateful. And anything, you know, it's just uh, our opinions about 440 cans. doesn't mean they're right anyway. No, no, abs- absolutely but not. I will but still, well, I think we, there are some of the beers let, later on in the show that are worthy of that little bit of a discussion point. Oh, oh, without a doubt, without a doubt. So let's, um, while we're here talking about Brew York, let's just give them a, a bit of a mention in terms of what they what they do and, and, and what they offer. So as I say, Lee got in touch um, essentially because they've, they've released a beer that we'll be drinking later on. Um, that's a little bit of wrestling themed, and I got a bit excited about it. And, yeah, it meant, and, meant nothing and, to me, didn't it? And we had a, a two in and a throw in, and, and, and then Lee got in touch and, and said to us, um, Oh, let me send you some beers. Um, so, and as I say, he sent us some supporting texts as well. So, uh, he's actually been a listener to the show since you joined. Um, so, he joined at the same time. I brought one um, listener. 
<laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the thing you contributed the most. Um, and it says, even though he now works in commercial beer, he still enjoys his weekly fix of opinions, uh, as you're still the first to report many of the goings-on in the UK's ever expanding beer bowl. Well, thank you for, for that, Lee. That's um, very nice of you to say so. In terms of the brewery, they opened in April 2016. It was a collaboration between Lee and Wayne Smith, uh, both keen amateur home brewers and soon began brewing together. Uh, both huge fans of the American beer scene and began brewing those styles with an English twist. Uh, they both travelled the country and in Wayne's case the world, visiting breweries and tap rooms, knowing that at the heart of their brewery what they wanted was uh, a tap room that was something special. So they've got an open plan showpiece now, which brews uh, brewing operation directly across from a welcoming tap room. They began with 80 hectolitres, and he's even put in brackets here, about 12,000 pints. So he clearly listens to the show. Good man. Uh, and a 100 person tap room with a Riverside beer garden. And just three years on, they now have 450 hectolitres, about 80,000 pints of fermentation capacity. They've expanded their tap room to 150 person capacity and created a hybrid German American style beer hall with highly rated street food kitchen. It compromises a beer wall of 40 keg taps including 20 guest line with large communal tables and benches which encourage social interaction after a bit of alcoholic lubrication. Now, funnily enough, that's rung some bells for me because this was that was one of the first things that you as a listener of the old Beer O'Clock show ever asked us about was German style beer halls yeah, over it. That was and it. I remember DMing you and saying, I'm sorry, I really don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and you had to explain it to me. So that's, that's kind of closed the nice little well, circle off there. But yeah, it does, close, it does close the circle. I've seen a few pictures of the tap room. It does look good. Yeah. It does look good. I, I mean, I'd love, I have to admit, I would love to get out there. In York is a lovely place. Yeah. Again, a couple of hours from London. Well, easy enough to get again, to. full disclosure, Lee has invited us um, and our partners up for, for a visit at some point. So I think that's definitely one that we'll be looking at accepting that invitation to have a little look around. Definitely, and, I'd love to have a look around yeah, and, at some point in the And future. introduce you to a German style beer hall. Yes, in, indeed. But I just, <laughs> I, I like that. There's a little bit of nostalgia going on, <laughs> going on there. Um, so, so yeah, we've got, uh, we're going to do six beers tonight yep. that, that, that they've sent us. Right, wisely or not. And then uh, the other beers, we're going to do them on our next show. Yes. As, as well, to, to, to because it was so hard to decide which ones to do and which ones not to do. I think in the end I just said to you, you know what mate, let's just do them all. Let's, let's just split them across two well, shows and let's see how they work. There's 11 different beers. So yeah. We, we've got to do them justice. Yeah. And while you've been talking, I've still been drinking the American Pale Ale and it is smashable. It is ridiculously smashable. What did you say? What's 5.5% 5. 5. 5. is it? Five and a half. It doesn't feel like five and a half if I'm doesn't being honest. It doesn't feel like five and a half at all. Especially in this weather. You, you would imagine being in their tap room, sitting on the riverside, smashing a few of those. Just smashing these back. You wouldn't yeah. be thinking about it, would you? No, absolutely not. I mean, that is that is an absolute stunner of a beer. It it, it really is. Well, I mean, Columbus Mosaic and Simcoe. It's got everything you want for a for that kind of beer. No, for, it for works really well. So, first beer, must have been impressed. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, before we start our pub crawl, oh, are we going? To, should we start our pub crawl? Yeah, I think we start. We've got it's a big pub crawl. We've got yeah. a few miles. to I did try putting it in these Google Maps, and a couple of places said I couldn't walk there. Uh, I'm thinking, so I, was, I was trying to build up the mileage yeah. to see how many miles it all came to but because I had to cross a, a bit of the big ocean yeah. it said cannot work it out <laughs> so and we will say at this point that obviously the, the, the poll that we put out this weekend that we'll come to later on we, we did just ask uh, listeners for their top three we've taken a bit of a liberty and we've got eight each haven't we because we thought if we're going to do this properly we, we need to give ourselves a good number and in, in my mind Eight is a manageable amount that you'd be able to get yeah, around if you were also, able to do this in a day. Well, I can't do this in a day. No, I but know. it's also that whole around the world in 80 beers and 80 places and 80 days. The 8 and 80 is always a bit of a travel theme yeah. to it, hasn't it? So, shall I go first? Yeah, go on. Okay. Get, 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 get in first. Let's let's start off with pub number one for Martin. Where are we going and, and where are you taking me and what are we going to be drinking okay. when we're in there, The mate? first pub may not be too much of a surprise. <laughs> It's the Victoria Inn in Colchester. I had a feeling that was going to be <laughs> on your list. That's that's my starting point. It's not far from the station. So if I'm going to go on a bit of a pub crawl, okay. I can't go too far from the you, station. You really have thought logistically about this, a few of these I definitely have. Okay. At least four of these are very close to public transport. Okay. Why are we going to the Vic, mate? We're going to the Vic because I love the pub. 
there'll always be something on either cask or keg that I want to have. And generally, you know me, if I go into a pub which has decent cask, I'll look at the cask first of all. Yeah. And even if they've got a couple of guest beers, which I'm not too sure about, I can have a pint of the Yorkshire Blonde, which they did in conjunction with not my favourite brewery, Colchester Brewery, but it's probably one of the best beers that I like from Colchester Brewery. Mm-hmm. So that's where I'd be starting, and that's why I then contemplate the, the next seven bars in my pub from, crawl. Oh, so, so you, you're actually contemplating where you're going from well, the Vic? Well, you know, you're sitting in the Vic, they've just opened. Yeah. You know, I'm, get, I'm thinking about what train is going to be delayed next. <laughs> then I can get, get on to the next place. Interestingly, there were a couple of our listeners that mentioned the Vic as well, and they're not people that live in the area. No. So we're obviously beginning to have a bit of a bit of an impact on people's view of... I want to go there and I want to try that place. It's probably just curiosity because we'll be bang on about it. Yeah. But it is worth a visit. Um, okay, so I will say that was on my long list. I didn't put it on my short list because I suspected that it would be the first place that you'd go you to. You suspected correctly. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you want to know where I'm starting? Go on then. The other end of the country. You're starting, what, in Newcastle? Yep. I'm starting in a pub that's probably got one of the most iconic views. Up the top the, of the hill, in overlooking the, the time. UK, <laughs> yes. I'm starting at the free trading. That, um, that was on my list. Purely because, you know, I've, I've not spent as many times, as many hours I was, as I would have liked to in there. What, despite being locked in because of those massive hailstones? I oh, know, that was shocking that afternoon where Miles and I just had to stay there because the weather just kept us pinned down. Yeah, I, mean, I think, in, that, I think the free trade didn't actually lock the doors in, though. Right? Yeah, yeah, wouldn't let people go out. No, it was too dangerous. dangerous to go out. Um, yeah, I could just, I could literally sit on a bar stool in that window or, or, or in their garden with that view over the Tyne and over Newcastle City. And is it, oh, is it a town? Hang on, I always get this city. Is, is it a city? Okay. Uh, and, and just sit there and I would be literally drinking whatever the Almasty house beer is coming through their cask pump. Probably sparkled. Just quite happily enjoying Okay, but you'd still afternoon. start off a cask. I would still so start off with cask, We have yeah. a bit of symmetry there. Yeah, I, so I think, we, I think it's got, got to be the starting point. Okay, so we've both gone for fairly traditional pubs. Mm-hmm. Both on cask. Yeah, similar start. So I, yeah, I, I had a long list of about over twenty names, which I then did match. My long list wasn't as long as that. Then a short list of about ten to twelve, and then I did manage to get it down to the eight. But I had to be really ruthless for myself. Uh, so my issue was more with the eight. Wasn't so much the ruthlessness. It was I kept couldn't decide which ones I wanted in there, um, and I think I think I eventually settled on the ones that I'm really happy with. So. I've left the Vic, I've gone to the train station, and then I've gone as far as Chelmsford. <laughs> it's only about you, twenty minutes away. You've gone, you've <laughs> gone, you've you've stayed properly local, haven't you? For the first two, yeah. Um, so I've ended up at the Ale House. Of course you have. So a place which again listeners will be familiar with. It's where we hold the Essex Bottle Share on the first Tuesday of the month, and pretty much any other excuse we can find to go in there, we will do. Um, great selection of beers, twelve cast taps. Good, very good selection of keg these days as well. They've really upped their game there. And uh, as for the fridges, really good. And but 12 ciders available as well. Yeah. Not dissimilar. I mean, the Vic has 12 ciders as well, but it's all tucked away and I always forget about them. Whereas for the Ale Houses, again, it's a bit front and centre. And 30 seconds walk away from the train station. And the home of Essex Bottle Show. That's what I said. Did, I'm sorry. Maybe I was too busy getting lost in your... Yeah. You were still you were still in the free trade in. I, I probably was, yeah. I was probably <laughs> probably sat there still looking over that view. You were thinking, admiring. why the hell are they still got a pub cat when they could have me? <laughs> so yeah, I haven't got very far. I'm still in Essex. Okay, well, my next step's a bit further. Um, so again, jumping on a train, hopping over to the other side of the country from Newcastle and a little bit further down as as well. I'm finding myself in Manchester. And there's only one place I'm finding myself in in Manchester. Not the Marble Arch one. It would be the Marble Arch. And I am mm. sitting in the Marble Arch and I'm drinking a pint of pint. There you go. Two of the ones of my, of my long list. <laughs> we kind of know each other here, don't we? <laughs> um, yeah. I, again, I've gone for kind of uh, a place that I've been to a few times. Obviously, ge- geography doesn't allow me to go there as much as I'd like to. No. Um, very traditional. Oh, you, um, you know, I'd probably have cask again in the Ale House if there was a good one on that I already wanted. Yeah. Or it'd be something like the Lurvig House Party on Keg at Fort or, or Signature Brews Road. Signature Brews Road was tasting brilliant last time I was yeah. in there. So, sorry to inter- interrupt yeah. you. So you'd have, a, you'd have a pint of pint. Pint of pint, sparkled, 
quite happily. You're loving the sparkly bit of this part well, of the I'm, journey, I'm aren't you? I'm still in the north, mate. I'm yeah, yeah. still in the north. You're still sparkling. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, I, yeah, I mean, for me, it's it's as an iconic venue as, as the Free Trade Inn almost. A uh, little bit of a trek to get to. Maybe hasn't got quite the most beautiful views of Manchester. But once you go inside, the, the, the decor, the feel, the ambience, the, the beers that are available. Chips and gravy. Chips and gravy. It's, it's everything you want in, yeah. in, in, in a pub. Can't be correct. I said it was, it was on my, it was on my long, long list. Um, I did have a feeling it might make your short list, and I have to admit. But like I said, I had to be ruthless with myself to get it down to the eight. That's not a bad start. That's a pretty strong start. It's a strong start. It's a strong start. I like so. the way we're both at different ends of the country as yes. well at the moment. I mean, I'm going to be at a different end of the world soon, but hey. <laughs> so, Beery Adventures. I think it's been a bit low-key, hasn't it? There's, there's only really been one thing happened in the last couple of weeks. True. Mate. I mean, I have been a bit focused on, on, on my wedding, which took place yeah. uh, a week a week ago or so. Um, had a fantastic time. Thank you very much for coming along as well, Steve. Thank you for inviting um, me. Lovely day. I managed to get some good beers sorted, and but top of the beer list was uh, Adnam's Ghost Ship, the wedding special, a six point seven percent version of Adnam's Ghost Ship. Just about to ask you why it was so special for those that didn't already know. <laughs> <laughs> so the usual comes in at four and a half percent, one of my favourite cast beers. Um, this one came in at six point seven percent. I went I went up to Southwold and I saw Ed Ed Razzle shortly to be leaving Adnam's to set up his own brewery. Yeah, so we're exciting, very, exciting very excited really. about that, doing up the barn and everything. So that's going to be some really exciting times and hopefully at some point in the very near future we can do something with him about that as well. So I can only say thank you again, Ed. Uh, thank you very much for the ghost ship. Adnams, thank you very much for allowing Ed to do it for me. It went down superbly well. It was, uh, I've, I've got to say, it was incredibly drinkable. Um, At 6.7%. Yeah, once once they finally got, because it was, it was fobbing a little bit yeah. when it was first pouring. Once they finally got that sorted, it, it settled out beautifully. And I'm, I'm going to say it didn't taste anywhere near its 6.7%. No. And uh, that there were there were times where there was almost that there was a lot more flavour packed in there than you get in the standard variety. Um, I think there were a lot of people looking at some check-ins on Twitter the following day through very green eyes. Yes. Um, over the fact that that Ed and Adnams did that for yeah. you, and I, th- I think that's brilliant. Of, I'm of, of eternally them, so. grateful for that. So, uh, a, a one-off beer for, for for the wedding for me, and Michelle, was wonderful, and um, uh, thanks to Clayton as well because um, with Ed's permission. He did mock up a bit of a label for yeah, a brilliant label as well. As well. Absolutely, it looked, brilliant, it looked yeah. beautiful, and it's in the uh, it's it's in the memory box now. Excellent. So, thank you very much. Great stuff. And that's probably about it. That's the, I think that's all we've got to say. Yeah. Like I say, it's been a bit of a quiet period um, yeah. coming into the summer now as well. I know I've got a few things coming up, but we'll well, we'll cover those on future shows. The future shows may have a few more beery adventures. I, I, I suspect. I, I, I think so. Yeah, we can't always be out there drinking for no. the, uh, for our listeners' entertainment. <laughs> exactly. as, as much as we'd love to be. <laughs> now we had four forty cans. I yep. reckon I've got about five milliliters left in my my glass. I reckon I've got about seven. Um, I don't know if I've got much more to add apart from the fact that I just really enjoyed it. It ticks all the boxes I'd expect an American pale ale to tick. It is incredibly drinkable. Um, I've got to say that the Brew York have got these little um, spider diagrams yeah. on their hands as well, which show you what you should be experiencing. This one's topping out at hops and fruits um on on this one more so than the bitterness yeah i disagree with that I, I, yeah i would i, I would say it's got a lovely bit of finish i actually to think it. it's probably a bit better balanced than perhaps that diagram yeah gives you gives you credit for yeah but again if you if you was picking this can up and you were maybe new into your journey it's nice to have that sort of information on the side of a can so okay so this is what I should be looking for in in, in terms of this quite beer. An easy quite an easy diagram isn't it yeah ab- absolutely so yeah enjoy that first beer so 5.5 percent what should we do next I know should we jump up a little bit yeah let's jump up a little bit too same which is six and a half percent Steve okay bit of an introduction for this one then so this is cereal killer this is gluten-free West Coast IPA 6.5 percent um, Lee goes on to say that they were becoming increasingly frustrated with everything becoming juice and haze for days. Whatever ever happened to bitterness and a good resin finish? Uh, however, they do refer to it as a crossover IPA, 
By this they mean you get the clarity, bitterness and resin you'd associate with the classic West Coast style, but we've also used some fruity hops in Citra, Amarillo and Nelson Sovin that would be more associated with your haze bombs. I'm not sure I agree with that. I don't necessarily associate Citra with being... Or, or, or Nelson Sovin. So well, I don't, but, mate, but you know, they are the brewers, so presumably someone is using those at times. Yeah. But maybe it's the cryo hops versions that they use. Maybe. Again, big can, 440ml can. Very distinctive artwork, the Brew York ones, aren't they? They are, yeah. I mean, but there's a, there's a... Although the artwork is different, it has got a Brew York feel to it. It's, it's, it still it's looks a theme like within a theme, isn't it? Um, I'm pulling the face because the nose coming out of that can the minute it was cracked, is exciting me. Oh, that looks beautifully clear as well. I mean, that's... See, that's the sort of beer that I fell in love with, the, the, the look of that. And because of the weather, a bit of condensation on the outside of the glass yeah. as well. Well, um, without further ado... I'd, I'd, I'd drink a lot of that. I mean... Um, I'm not I'm not getting... Ma I'm going to say, I'm not getting massive waves of bitterness. I'm not getting massive waves of bitterness, but what I am getting is distinctly different to the American Pale Ale. It's, it's crisper. It's crisper, it's slightly fruity as well. Yeah. Probably is actually less bitter or less dry than the first beer, or at least mm -hmm. my initial my initial thinking is. Maybe you know sometimes you have to have a few mouthfuls, and maybe if there is a bit of dryness or bitterness, it will start to attack you after that. But it's a good start again on a day like today. It's a very good start, that you know. And again, I think there are times when certain beers just seem to suit certain seasons or certain temperatures. Yeah, and again, the diagram on this one leaning more towards bitter bit more mouthful on it and, and quite a big hot profile hot profile yes not so much getting a difference in the, in the mouthfeel the mouthfeel still feels quite light to yeah. me yeah I mean you know it's feeling like a beer I want to have more of that is that is almost exactly what I want in an West Coast IPA the one thing it's missing for me is that it's a bit the more the big bitter here the, the more end. the smack bitter yeah, smack that's, that's not there right now although we have got it exceptionally cold we have which means it might come through if we give it at least another three minutes. It's, it's not going to get that long in the glass because I don't want it to warm up too much. Um, while we're giving it that three minutes, let's move on to... We've gone through our first two stops in rapid fire. Um, drinking a lot of cask beer by the sounds of it. There might be some more. Okay, where are we moving on to well, for, for stop number three I decided, for you? I decided to stand the train a bit longer this time. Okay. So I'm into London. A few stops in the tube. And I, too, am going up north. Okay, welcome. Join me. <laughs> um, I'm going to Sheffield. Ah, okay, where are you going? Well, You're not going to the Rutland Arms, are you? <laughs> to, to try and actually see what it looks like. <laughs> no, but that's a good idea. Um, but no, I'm not fearing far from the station. Oh, you're going to the Sheffield Tap, I'm aren't you? I'm going to the Sheffield Tap, and I'm going to drink cast dry pour. Of course you are. <laughs> Which is basically, on, on the three visits we had to that place, that's all, I did. That's all you drank was, yes. was cast dry pour. <laughs> You wasn't interested in any of the other taps that nope. were in that place. All you wanted was cast dry pot. Uh, to be fair, I did uh, what my father-in-law does. He looks at the dessert menu and then has three scoops of ice cream. <laughs> I did look at the taps and then I had some more dry pot. And then had some more dry <laughs> pot. Um, but a place that we visited on the Crimbo Crawl Crimbo Crawl. Well, so I think we finished there, didn't we? We did finish there on the Saturday night. We did the Crimbo Crawl podcast day after. We did, yeah, yeah. And we did stop in there on the Friday night as well. Um... So basically, we did. We managed to squeeze in three visits in less than forty-eight hours. We did well then. I thought it was, apart from the fact it had Jaipur in it, lovely building. And and how for a station tap, the, the location. I was just going to say, how important is the location to that place? Oh, brilliant as well. That it's literally on the platform. Yeah. So you, you know you've got to, you've got to come out and, and literally walk out of the station, turn right, turn right again, and, and it's a multi-room place as well. Yeah, it's, it's, it's huge. You've got this one long bar that is where the actual bar bit is. Then you've got like another two back rooms, and then you've got a couple of side. It's like four or five different rooms. Yeah, it's a superb building, and it sells dry pour and cask. And so you're more than happy with that. Yeah, 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 yeah. It might yeah. take me a while to get back on the train. <laughs> well. I am getting closer to you, okay. but I'm not quite there, not quite at Sheffield. I am jumping on a train from Manchester, and I'm going a mere 20 to 30 minutes on the train. Leeds? Huddersfield. Oh, okay. And I'm out at Huddersfield, and I'm not going to where a lot of people, and we'll come on to it later on, have suggested I should go. So you're not going to the Grove? I'm not going to the Grove. There's only one place I'm going when you're I go going, to Huddersfield. You're going to get Pints of Cannibal? I'm going to the Magic Rock Tap Room, and I'm going to drink... 
All the cannonball. All the cannonball. So I've already had enough for car. So you've upped my Jaipur. <laughs> and, and I'm going pints of cannonball. Um, for, for me, um, in, in terms of the places that I've visited, um, the Magic Rock tap room, in terms of a tap room space... Is is still an exceptional space. Yeah, well, me and Michelle were in there a couple months ago, weren't we? When we went up to Scarborough for the Easter break, we yeah. walked in there. I mean, it was a busy Saturday afternoon because the Easter weekend was actually a really nice weekend, yeah. so it was busy up there. But it's, it's still a lovely space in there. Um, but I think you've also got a bit of an emotional connection with it, haven't you? Because it was part of your your beer journey, part of your Leeds. Oh, absolutely. Yorkshire experience, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, when I, um, when I used to spend a lot of time in Leeds with work, I would, if I was in Leeds for a few days, I would always have one night where I'd get on the train and go to Huddersfield. Easy to and, get to. And, I'd, and I'd spend an evening in the Magic Rock Tap and then I'd go back to Leeds. Yeah, um, yeah you, you know, people will know that I've always been a massive fan of Magic Rock and everything they do. Uh, when they introduced the tap room, we went there on. We did the, that pre Crimbo Call as well, didn't well, we? For even Leeds? before the before Crimbo Call Eve even existed, yeah. we 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 did a, a a night in the Magic Rock Tap the night before the Leeds. We did that, we, call. but basically did that for you, didn't we? Basically, yeah. yeah. I was I, well, again. I wasn't going to be that close to it and not and not do it. But they did show um, us. They did show us around, and um, I think that was my first experience of seeing a, a beer canning line up close. Yeah. Which was, a, and obviously everything's expanded since then, hasn't it? It's, Massively, it's, it's, it's I mean, that, bigger. that was December 2015. That was, that was still the old beer o'clock show. That was you and Mark. Yeah, yeah. Doing it. So it was a lovely experience going up there on a Friday night. Winter time, so it wasn't too busy either. No, it's, it's nice, but that, that, that's the thing. And, and I just think they've utilised the space so well in, in terms of, you know, you've got, what, something like 16 odd Magic Rock beers on. Yeah, and four dedicated cask lines. They, yeah, that they was take up and that was now. the only disappointing. There was a couple of disappointing things when I was there. I didn't, there wasn't. I didn't feel like I can't remember there being four cask on, and they had none of their dark beers on tap. When I was up there at Easter, sometimes you just need a bit of a balance, don't you? Yeah, that that was a disappointing thing. In terms thing to of me. the beers that were available, obviously they had dark arts and um, oh, common grounds in the fridge, but yeah. I can get the cans other times. I wanted you want it from the source. I that's, wanted it. That's tap. Yeah, that's that, that's why. So yeah. that was a little bit different for me. And they've also expanded. They've got put um, some space outside as well, some tables, um, both covered and, and uncovered outside as well. So they've yeah. really ramped it up, and they, I think they've expanded a bit of their street food out there as well because they know that they're getting a few people. So every the weekend, isn't it different? Different street food vendors. Well, and obviously with Huddersfield having been in the Premier League for the last two years as well, I don't reckon that'll drop off much now that people have discovered it. They will carry on going back yeah. there as yeah. well. So. That's not a bad, not a bad shout. Not, not, not Although bad. Although you're going to be hammered at this stage. Well, so are you if you're just going to be smashing pints of Jaipur. You're smashing pints of Cannibal. Yeah, well, we're just, we're just going to stop at that point, aren't we? So you're, you're going to sit and enjoy your pints of Jaipur. Yeah, yeah I'm going to miss, miss a couple of trains. And, and then not many miles away, I'm going to be sitting enjoying my pints of Cannibal. Yeah. And we'll, we'll, we'll continue our pub crawl uh, a little bit later because we do have some news to get through tonight as well. So, uh, as these things normally do... Uh, the morning after, or the afternoon <laughs> after, we recorded our last show. Uh, the news broke that Hop Stuff Brewery, who reportedly have been in trouble for a while, there'd been a few bits about um, notices going up on doors and unpaid bills, etc. And they were very, very quiet on social media. Yes, yeah. Um, so the news broke that basically um, Molson Cause had bought Hot Stuff Brewery and its tap rooms as part of a pre-packaged administration process for an undisclosed fee. I've never um, heard that term. No, pre-packaged. Never mind. Um, I think it's something to do with the fact that they went into um, basically went into receivership. Well, they went into they? receivership, came straight back out again. Yeah, I mean, it's bollocks, isn't it? it? It is. Well, when when you start reading into the release, I mean, um, Which James, way you look at it. James Yeomans, who we who, who we met, had on on the show. Yeah, and I've I've got to say. I always thought James was pretty savvy when it came to... Well, that was certainly the impression he gave us. And also, what his background was in the city as well, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, in, in Stocks and Shares. So, I actually thought that the business side... Because I don't think Hop Stuff... Let's be honest, I don't think Hop Stuff were ever pulling up trees in the beer world. No. But I thought it's business, it would be all right. Yeah, but pa- pa- apparently not. So, so James is, is staying with the business, um, interestingly enough. There's been a few of those recently, hasn't there? <laughs> yeah. Um, and this is following, obviously, uh, in February 2018, Hop Stuff actually breaking its crowdfunding investment target after successfully raising almost 
£800,000 to go towards the expansion of its network of tap rooms. Um, but as we said, it's been experiencing financial difficulties in recent months. Um, unfortunately, the cash position of the business was weighing heavily on, on the business and Hopstuff Brewery Limited and each of its subsidiaries entered into administration on the 12th of July um, and basically was then sold and in the sale was the brewery, the brand, the tap rooms and transfer of all of the staff to Molson Coors. So that was the package. Yeah, that, but that, it's that, just that, the phrase pre-package is just a bit I found, I've, you know, I've got... I've seen a few of these things in my time, yeah. both inside and outside of the office space, and I've never heard, I've personally never heard the term prepackaged. I actually no. meant to ask someone at work, but I never got a chance. Uh, most interestingly, uh, due to the full sale of the shareholder in the comf- company, um, none of the uh, people that invested are getting any returns. No, but they did, um, didn't they tweet that there was going to be like a club that they could the, sign up there to? There is, they can. But, I mean, that's like rubbing salt in the wounds, isn't it? It is. Well, original investors can continue to be, be involved in hop stuff if they wish to. Um, together with Molson Coors, they'll be launching a hop stuff collective for original investors who want to stay involved. Members of the collective will re- receive exclusive access to key events throughout the year, a product subscription, discounts, and be invited to be part of a new product development through quarterly tasting and innovation sessions at the brewery. Um, that, if It always felt to me that those that invested in hop stuff weren't necessarily investing for perks. They were investing because they believed it was a a, a local business that would work. Yeah, and it, it that seems like a very piecemeal offer. Yeah, and, and, to be, and to be fair, I, I, I thought the tap rooms were nice. A couple of tap rooms well, I experienced. The one that we went to over in Deptford, yeah, in the yard. I thought that was a nice that, that space. Was lovely. And that what they've been doing with that yard because that's where Hot Burns and Black have opened their second shop as well. I thought that was good. Um, yeah, I mean, I was surprised it happened. And then equally, a bit p- p- pissed off and cheesed off at another one has just been sold into administration, almost come straight back out again. Yeah. Everyone who's invested has lost all their money. And, and another crowdfunding one. Another crowdfunding well. one. And the guy at the top has also stayed on. Yeah. So there's, there, there seems to be too much of that going on. It's a little on. bit of a trend at the moment. Right it's, I don't think it's a very happy trend either. No. Abs- absolutely if, if, not. If I'm being honest. And like I said, um, I thought that Hop stuff. We're never pulling up trees. We've tried a few of their beers, both at the, at, you know, they sent us a couple of cans. I've had some from the supermarkets, which I've gone into recently as well, and some of the tap room. None of them pulled up trees, but there was nothing wrong with them either. But I thought that the business side would be fine. But again, debt. It's debt. It's not having the beer, having the cash. I mean, there was that piece recently about AB InBev. And how much they're sinking under their debt at the moment. Really? Yeah, there was um, a piece which was shared on Twitter the last couple of days. I think Roger Pott shared it, and I just had a bit of a, a look at it. And their debt ratio is the kind of ratio that just make your eyes water. How much debt they've got, and that's what they're servicing at the moment, is debt. Because, you know, effectively, the, the worth of the company is actually less in monetary terms than it was before they merged. So, you know, if a big company, if two big companies like that can't do it, what makes it think? What do the small companies think they can just carry on expanding? Mm. But it, it's like you say, it's a worrying trend that we're seeing in terms of yes. the crowdfunding market. And we did um, the week after that was released, we put a poll out as, as well saying, would you, yeah. with, with things as they are now, would you invest in in, in, in a crowdfunding scheme? And 75% of 545 people came back and said no. Yeah, because there's been a lot now. Yeah. There's been a lot now. But just temper that a little bit with a lot of people saying that they would, but more so if it was perks rather than as an investment. A, 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 an investment into looking for return on your yeah. money. And even if you're not looking for return on your money, you you know you're still you were still investing for some reason. Yeah. And it still feels like a bit of a kick in the teeth, regardless of where why you're investing, and regardless of whether you thought I've written that money off. Well, let's let's just go back to one that that we've both invested in. Um, which was the Beerneveau, um Heritage yep. Scheme. So, so what Steve's planning on doing with these heritage beers. If um, if we invested in that because we both know Steve yep. and, and we believe in what he's aiming to do yep. and what he wants to do with that project. But if he turned around tomorrow and said, oh, I misjudged it all, nobody's getting any beers, you'd be a little bit upset, wouldn't you? Yeah, definitely. Because I've invested in the person as well as the brewery, yeah. as well as in what he's trying to do. Yeah, don't get me wrong. Having tried some of his other heritage beers before, 
I want to try these. Yeah. Definitely want to try them. Definitely want to get hold of them. And, and, um, and again, don't get us wrong. Knowing Steve and knowing the the thought and the planning he puts into things, we have no oh, belief yeah. that we're this, not going to see those. But we are going to see those. This beers. is just an example but that we're using. It, yeah, it's, 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 it's something that... It's close to us. Abs- absolutely, without a doubt. Yeah, right? and, but it is a worrying trend. Uh, I think the actual more worrying trend is this bit where in and out of receivership or administration so quickly. With the same head person yeah, apparently staying on. And don't get me wrong, I don't want to see people lose their jobs. Equally, I don't want to see people losing their investments. And again, it's not doing this, still a relatively small part of the market for beer, any favours. That's true. That, 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 that's, that's absolutely true. Because there could be a few genuine people out there who actually don't even want to crowdfund that much. Who may ne- ne- want their next th- FE, for example. Yeah. They're going to be a bit nervy about going out there and asking for the man- money. Yeah, because now people are going to be like... Mm. Mm. Not not really into yeah. that at, at, at the moment. Look what's happened recently. Yeah. That kind of thing. Yeah. It's, not, it's no wonder people keep throwing money at Brewdog. That is indeed true, <laughs> yeah. Because it's probably pretty confident that if nothing else, at least they're not going to lose it. Yeah. Well, let's let's hope that, that, one, um, that that's one that begins to slow down as we enter the summer. Yeah, as a trend, I yeah. could do that one slowly. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I certainly don't want to be coming back after our little break and the, the, the news Another stories one. being all about crowdfunding schemes that have gone the wrong way. Um, next up, we've got um, a bit of a merger going. Well, a merger, a merger, a buyout actually. Yeah. So Stonegate are buying Enterprise In Group for one point three billion. Um, so this is essentially a, a, a buyout of one pub company buying out another pub company. Still got to be funded by debt though. Yes, yeah. The, and the reason why EI is selling up is because they can't service the debt. Yeah. That that is that is in this. Um, Sorry, I mean I haven't read the piece. Sorry, some, I, didn't, I didn't mean to jump on that. Um, it's got it's got to be debt again, or well, it's got to be leveraging on the actual uh, sites they're buying. A percentage of it is yeah. So so they they've agreed to buy uh, Stonegate. Have agreed to buy uh, Pubgo EI Group for one hundred one one point two seven billion, which sees the operator says estate rise by four. Thousand sites. That's a phenomenal making number. Making Stonegate the UK's largest pub owner. Now, there's probably a whole discussion to be had here in terms yeah. of tide taps and, and 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 things within that. Yeah, because um, I, I mean, I don't know much about Stonegate. I, I don't. I'd, I'd need to really research this if but we were going to do this as a show. They've been quite acquisitive. Yeah. Is it, you know, over the last few years, they've been quite acquisitive, and to end up with a pub estate of four thousand pubs. I mean, it surely wasn't... It's a ridiculous number. You know, this wasn't uh, on the cards when... Because this is all still going back to the beer orders, isn't it? But they're breaking up with the big six and stuff yeah. like that. All you've done is ended up with a pub co ending it. Owning... Owning all of them. Owning yeah. a number. 4,000 pounds. Yeah. So... So they've, said, they've got more than Grinking then and stuff. People like that. Uh, easily. The Grinking haven't got 4,000 pounds. No, but then... They're, so they're bigger than, say, Marston's and Grinking and... Yeah. Other regions Easily. put together. Easily. It's a phenomenal so, number. Would, would they own the likes of uh, Be It One and Slug and Lettuce as, as, as well? Okay, very so, popular in the city. Again, that's 760 sites. Um, and that's also cool. buying 333 sites from Mitchells and Butlers almost 10 years ago as, as well. So it seems as though this is a number that they keep building upon. No, but that's, like I said, it's got to be dead. It can't just be all yeah. the earnings. Um, so the acquisition acquisition valued EI Group's entire business at near three billion, including its debt, and adjusted for the recent disposal of three hundred and seventy commercial properties. So they've taken on their debt yes. as, as, as well within that. Uh, both companies said there were strong strategic reasons for the buyout, including their complementary portfolios and skills within the business, which would benefit customers, tenants, employees, and other stakeholders. Question has to be raised there. Is it really going to benefit customers? Well, I was going to say, I'm not sure. The, the, More tied I, lines? I, it's going to benefit someone, but I'm not sure, sure who. I'm not sure people at the one side of the counter or even the tenants Yeah, necessarily because that's a whole load of pubs all owned by one group. If you move away from there. I still can't over that number. 4,000 pubs. How many pubs are in the UK now? Because yeah. I know we keep getting these stats and stuff, but that's got to be a big percentage now. Sean, Sean. Maybe, maybe Sean, we need... Uh, the, 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 I'm, t- I'm using we as in the royal we because you're having two weeks off. Maybe we need to do a little bit of research on this and we come back and, and, and this is what we do on the next show. Yeah, but I would like to do a bit of research on this because I'm interested about how much debt can be behind this and how much leverage. 
I'm, I'm sure you'll have some time. There's when got you're to be loads. Sat on your cruise, drinking beer. Drinking beer. So, oh yeah, they've so, got, they've to got, research. Got giant pour on there as well. There you go. Brilliant. More joy for just yeah. just what you need. Sorry, before you go into the next bit, so I think we're going to rattle through the next few bits. I've almost finished this beer again. It's <laughs> so drinkable. It's it's it has warmed a little. I'm still not getting the big bitterness and and and, and the resinous notes that they that, no. that, that Lee spoke about there. But I think for some people they would probably still get because we sort of almost crave it sometimes. I think there are some people who would get a bitter hit on this and would go, ooh, and maybe even, not even not cringe, but go maybe a little bit of a shudder perhaps. Oh, yeah, that's a bit too bitter. That. We, we sort of crave that in this kind of beer. This kind of beer is the one we want to get that big bitter hit from. I, I think I think the thing for me when somebody says resinous notes, my baseline is, well, resin. Yeah. Is it, is it, is it, is it, is it there? <laughs> no? Well, yeah. it's, it's not resinous then, is it? That's your starting point. That's the, the, that but anyway, is no, but incredibly drinkable. Very drinkable. Again, feel like six point five percent. I mean, I'm quite happy, but it doesn't really feel like a bit of a hybrid, apart from maybe lacking that really harsh bit of edge. The rest of it feels like a West Coast. But it's really drinkable. I, I mean, I could, you, you know, all, all, all joking aside with the cannibal only comes yeah. in pints and cans. Drink I could, pints I could of this. drink pints. <laughs> I could happily drink pints of that. Very happily. On the riverside. Yeah. Um, yeah, last last few news stories then. So Jody Kidd has been named Beer Drinker of the Year. Now, this is a thing that's announced every year. It, it's some sort of uh, high-profile personality that has something actually to do with the beer industry as well. So I didn't know this. I saw the headline and I rolled my she has, eyes. She has been quite prominent in beer well, mentioned she, before. Well, she, she owns a pub. Yeah. She's she's a landlady of a pub, so there's quite a um, few landladies there. Celebrity pub owner Jody Kidd has been named 2019 Beer Drinker of the Year by an all-party parliamentary beer group at a ceremony earlier this week. Uh, she's been a tireless campaign of UK beers and pubs, and she led a delegation of brewers and fellow publicans to deliver a petition with over 100,000 signatures to 10 Downing Street that had been collected as part of the Long Live the Local campaign. I mean, any anything that's going to promote. Oh, it's got to be a good Local thing, isn't it? pubs, it's got to be a good thing. And also, it? they've probably gone for some, you've also gone for so many people wouldn't expect, like yourself. Yeah. You've gone Jodie Kidd. Oh, um, I thought you was nominating me for next year. No. Oh, okay. As, no. as beer drinker of the year. That's, that's a title I could go for. Uh, excuse me? It would be a joint. It would be a joint thing. Thank you. <laughs> but no, I think that anything that brings uh, that kind of publicity especially when it's a lot of people might be surprised to find out how involved she is in the beer world. You know, bear in mind, she's very much associated with being a model, very much into her cars and stuff as well, isn't yeah, she? Yeah, yeah. She's, she's, a, bit of, she's a bit of a petrol she head. she present, not Top Gear, but didn't she present the Channel 5 version of Top uh, Gear? I don't know. She was definitely one of the stars in a reasonably priced car on Top Gear once, yeah. maybe not twice. And I remember Jeremy Clarkson looked very pleased with himself interviewing her at the time. Um, she got to Jamiroquai. Guy from Jamiroquai. It's in my head. Or am, I just making, sure. or am I just making up celebrity gossip now? No, I don't. Well, see, the celebrity gossip thing hasn't actually happened yet. Oh, well. As far as our listeners Spoilers. are concerned. That's, that's in the next show. Spoilers. But for us, we've already had the discussion. Yeah. yeah. See, timey wimey. <laughs> um, and then we've got some news here about uh, Sam Brooks, who is a brewery that I know in particular you've, yeah, I, you've, I you've like. visited yeah. uh, on, on a frequent um, occasion. They're, they're moving as, as, as a brewery um, to um, Greenland's Ram Quarter Development oh, it's in, in, in Wandsworth. It's basically the old young site, isn't it? It is the old young site, yeah. Um, they're, they're, they're moving from Battersea to the old young site. Um, where beer has been continuously brewed since 1533 until 2006 when Young's moved away and, and took their operation out of London altogether. Um, Sandbrooks are taking on a 20 year lease with a new 11,000 square foot headquarters which will be housed in a newly restored grade 2 listed former brewery. Uh, they'll open a tap room set around the, de- the development's central square with outdoor seating, serving food and its own handcrafted brews, as well as bottle shops selling beers from around the world. company expects to produce more than one million pints a year at the site. I mean, I hope it works, because I mean, the, Sa- the Sandbrook site is tight. And it's a bit of a pig to get to, isn't it? It is a bit of a pig to get to. It's, I mean, it's worth it once you get there, because I mean, I personally, I do quite like the beers, and I've always found the atmosphere to be quite friendly, so... I've been there a couple of times and me and Michelle went there last year for the 10th anniversary party um, they do their yearly beer by the river thing 
So I really hope it does work out. And, you know, going back to the old Young site, plenty of heritage there as well. Yeah. So they had brewed continuously, but non-commercially since Young's left as well. Yeah, because there was a... The old uh, Young's brewer. No there was one a micro brewery. Yeah, basically no one there. told them they'd moved, so he just carried on brewing beer, didn't he? <laughs> That's all that happened. He just carried on brewing beer. Why is no one buying my beer anymore? Because <laughs> they don't know you're brewing it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but that's 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 great news. A little, again, a little bit of a history in in, yeah. in in London. Yeah, definitely. I think that'd be good, and then, and I'm pretty certain that's going to be easier to get to as well. Yeah, um, and one of the releases I said did go to uh, quite some length to stress that Sam Brooks is now London's oldest independent brewery. Well, I think as, I as, as, as or well. you or a few of us it within was you our that lit, called it. Yeah, yeah, because obviously a few of them have fallen away, and they are well, they're 11 years old now. Yeah. So, but that's no age, really. No, is but it? once Youngs went in two thousand and six, obviously, then Meantime, I think, opened before these guys, but they're not independent. And the last independent one before them would have been Fuller's. Yeah. Well, good, good on them. I would, I would be claiming it if it was me. I'd yeah. do exactly the same thing. Yeah. So, um, staying in London and South East, um, some news from Seba at their recent South East Independent Beer Awards. Um, that the beers that have won out are session IPAs. Have, have, have been the beers that won so um, Signature Brews Roadie has been named the best cask beer in South East England I haven't had it on cask enough to, to vote for it but having had it on keg recently I can vouch for the keg I can vouch for I the keg I can absolutely vouch for the keg four pints worth of it <laughs> yeah uh, during a bottle share during a bottle share uh, with West Berkshire's Brewery India Session Owl being awarded best bottle and canned beer at the recent awards. No, I haven't tried the best so Congratulations to, no, no. to both of those well done. breweries for that. And then one final thing on the news is just to say that today, as we record, is um, Lost and Grounded's third birthday. Yes. Yes, so um, obviously, happy birthday to well, Lost and absolutely. Grounded. Absolutely. Let's, uh, so let's raise a glass of that. Raise Cheers, a glass guys. Of Cheers. And thanks for looking after us last Christmas when we came to Bristol. Yeah, no, it was great fun. Thank you again for the tour. And yeah, you carry on brewing that first beer you did, the Keller Pills. Keller Pills, please, beer. please don't ever stop. Yeah, absolutely love that beer, and it's um, it is great to see that now available in supermarkets as well. I've got to say. Yes, set in four forty cans as well. That is in four forty <laughs> mil cans as well. So despite our previous um, bemoanings of the four forty mil can, uh, clearly we're loving them at, at the moment. Blimey, you've uh, raced down that last bit, Steve. I really, really enjoyed that. I think, I think the heat's getting to me just a little bit. Do you think is that is that it? That's, it's the heat. That's, that's what I'm blaming it on. Blaming it on. No, oh, that's certainly what I'll be blaming it on tomorrow morning. I was going to say it's tomorrow morning. You need to be blaming something, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. Um, while you're finishing that, then let's yep. uh, let's move on to our next stops on our pub call. So, where we currently left ourselves, you were sat in the Sheffield Tap in, enjoying pints of cast dry pour. And I was not too far down the road in the Magic Rock Tap Room in, in Huddersfield, enjoying pints of Cannibal. I've decided to stay north still. Okay. So I'm uh, popping over to where we had the stag weekend. Oh, you're heading over to Liverpool? So we're going over to Liverpool. Nice. Any ideas? <sighs> oh, I think you're going to go for the grapes. No. Oh, uh, ship a mitre then? Yes. Okay. Was it, was it the breakfast? Uh, it, didn't, it didn't hurt to bring that extra <laughs> sausages saying I cooked too many does anyone want, want them and I took them all um, but no I mean obviously I went to the ship of my two a couple of times with Michelle as well when we were up there in February yeah and loved it then loved it when we went in there for we had breakfast both days um, when I, with the little group I was with and um, it's just a lovely pub it's just so odd it's almost like a cross between an old pub and a social club with the decor and stuff and then you've got little bells on the wall still little offshoots an upstairs space great range of beers as well very friendly staff yeah despite your trying to assert yourself as being an orvener and he went no you're not yeah but he clearly <laughs> pointed out that mm, you're not mate <laughs> you're clearly not so yep Liverpool for me and then I'm going continental so okay I'm hoping to get over to the continent before Brexit kicks in properly yeah and I'm going to go to Cherbourg Okay, before you disappear off of the continent, yeah, I want to jump in with my next one Go because on it's because it's one that I absolutely need to come to Liverpool and get you and, and and take you to. So I was from Huddersfield. I was just going to skip over the Dows 
but now I've got to come to Liverpool and get you and, and, and then come back to the Dales. Okay. Um, I'm taking you to a brewery that only opens their tap room occasionally. And when that tap room is open, they serve the most amazing cask beer. So I'm taking you to the Thornbridge Brewery and I'm taking you <laughs> to their bar to finally get you that pint of cask <laughs> dry pour from the brewery. So one of the Simons going to pour it for me. Well, um, but yeah, so, so that's, be, that's uh, just before you disappear to the continent, okay. that's, that's where You're I need drag, to take drag you me to. back. I'm going to drag you back. I'm gonna, and, and it's something that one day we will do. We will go to the Thornbridge Brewery together and we will both enjoy a pint of cask dry pour at the Thornbridge Brewery less than so that, 100 metres from where it's produced. So that experience has stuck with you since you went, went there with Miles and the old lady. Abs- absolutely. And, you, you know, all, all joking aside, and I, I, I know I kind of bring it up at every opportunity. You do? But all joking aside, it's the most amazing pint of Jai Pour I've ever had. <laughs> it, it really was. And, and, and again, it, 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 come, it builds into that whole, the experience, the moment. You're at the Formbridge Hall, effectively, as well. The, yeah. the brewery. Yeah. The hall. Yeah. So that's, that, that would be my fourth stop. Um, I'm now going to let you go back on your journey to the continent. Thank you very much. As I say, I'm going to go to Cherbourg. Now, this was a been there twice. It's a place. It's a place called Beers, B E E R Z. And uh, on the first of the two cruises that me, me and Michelle have shared, completely stumbled it on it by accident. Michelle was the one who actually spotted it. I think she initially just spotted some beers in the window. Then we spotted it was a, a bottle shop what with tables and chairs which implied you could stay as well so we did but so the first time we had done a little bit of a wander of Cherbourg um a bit of touristy bits and then stayed in there last time we just went straight there most direct route possible went there but if you know it's there and you know you enjoy it you're going to do that that's exactly what we did yeah yeah and um Christine the, the Christabel Christine or Christabel who runs it lovely to see her again Bought a bottle of beer as well. We stayed there until she, on a Saturday afternoon she has like a sewing bee going on, which coincided with me wanting to go and watch the second half of the Liverpool match as well. <laughs> so we went around to an Irish pub around the corner because <laughs> you can always guarantee the sport in there. So um, Cherbourg is a lovely little place, but it's not probably going to be most people's tourist destination. But it just so happens on one of the seven-day cruises of P&O because Cherbourg is quite close to the UK. It's a convenient stop for them to then get back to Southampton nice and early the next day. Brilliant, lovely uh, feelings about it. I think Michelle might have had, had one of her, her major check-ins on Untapped, either 1,000 or 1,500 yeah. was there as well. So, lovely place. If you ever do go to Cherbourg, look out for beers. And if I remember correctly, she's actually opened a second shop uh, south of Paris as well, um, which one day I will hopefully get to. That's, that's a good sign though, isn't it, if a business is obviously doing well, if they're able to open Another Second place, yeah. Passage, yeah. So yeah, really good, really friendly, loved it. So yeah, I'm now on the continent. Okay, I'm staying in the UK, and I'm coming back to London for the many places that I might be able to choose from in London. Um, I'm going just south of the river as well, and this 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 might be a stretch in terms of it being a fancy pub crawl, but I'm going to the as yet unopened Colonel Tapper. Right, I'm going to open a beer. <laughs> oh, while I, we I, feel, I feel like you're going to call me out on that one. If, if not, if you're not allowing me to go to the as yet unopened Colonel Tap Room, then I'm going back in time to the previous Colonel Tap Room. Right. But I'm going to the Colonel. So I'm, I'm, regardless. Guessing, I'm guessing you have been to the Colonel Tap Room before. I, I have in its been. previous iterations. I have, yes. Okay, that's fine. I, I think I would have struggled with you were just going to one which hadn't opened and you hadn't No, been no, to. I, I, I have been to the previous one and I can understand many of the reasons why they said they needed to close it. Well, I think I got there towards the end when it was kind of hitting peak peak craft, so yeah. to speak. I mean, um, my my couple of visits to the Colonel, I've always got, when it did have its tap room, it used to open at nine, nine o'clock in the morning. I was there at nine. You always had to strategically place that if you were going to do the old Bermondsey beer yeah. mile. Well, you do the you Colonel. You do Colonel at the start. And then you walk all the way to Four Pure. Yeah. Because then that's the longest walk as well. So you can do a good hour and a half at the Colonel, a stroll to Four Pure, which is the furthest point away from there, get there roughly for when they open, and then you can start working your way along, avoid thus avoiding the Colonel. Let's pretend we're in like 2013, 2014, when loads of people are there. Yeah. 
See, I did it slightly differently when I did it. We started at Brew by Numbers because it was the one that opened the earliest. I think this was when Colonel had moved back to an 11 o'clock oh, opening, okay. maybe. So we did Brew by Numbers first. Then we did the Colonel. Even at 11 o'clock, it was ridiculously busy. Then we went up to Four Pure, and then we came back and did did, did the other spots. Oh, uh, yeah. No, it makes sense. It makes sense. No. Yeah. And, yeah, no, joking aside, I would. <laughs> I don't think we're alone on this. I'm going to put it out there. I mean, there's going to be a lot of people keen to go. Oh, absolutely. I, I'm, I'm going nowhere near it for the first two years of it being opened. But on my fantasy pub crawl, that's my next That's stop. where you're going. And when I, you, presumably on your fantasy pub crawl, there's hardly anyone else there. It's just me. Just me and Evan. Um, <laughs> but no, I'm just going um, to be sat in the, the, the Colonel's tap room and I'm just going to be drinking IPA. I might have one of their India Brown Stouts. Well, just to break it up. Yeah, I might have one of their India Porters. Who knows? But I'm just going to drink all the Colonel. All the Colonel. All the Colonel. That's, that, that's my it's next stop. It's a good shout. I hadn't, I hadn't thought about going to places which weren't yet open. I'd also had clothes. I thought it might be a stretch. But I, I, I was like, mm, it's a fantasy pub call, so I'm, I'm, I'm having yeah, okay. it. Okay, well, look, I'm going to say cheers to that. Cheers. With our fourth beer of the evening, third beer of the evening from Brew York. This is the Bar Chest, a 6.5% American South. It's symmetrical so far. Five and a half, six and a half, six and a half. Yep. All nice little numbers, these. Um, American Stout, I, I'm a big fan of American Stouts. Me too. And this is a collaboration brew. Um, I have got the information here because the the information on this one is quite interesting. This was um, it is very exclusive actually. What we've got here. Oh, is it? There are only forty eight cans of this beer. Really? In, in the well, and we've got two of them here. So there's only forty six others out there. Yes, there are. So this was brewed um, on their pilot kit in conjunction with their homebrew club, uh, of which both Liam Wayne were once part of. Um, the York Craft Ale Exchange. It was brewed for the BrewCon 19 competition, which was held across uh, at Northern Monk uh, a couple of weekends back. And the beer came second out of 28 teams and beers, only losing out to Sheffield Homebrew Club, working alongside Thornbridge. And Lee does go on to say, has to be said, not a bad brewery to lose to. <laughs> <laughs> Cool, bloody so hell. So we've got a we've got a really, really exclusive well, it's, beer. It's here. an exclusive beer, but I mean alright, they're using some professional kit. But this is still essentially a homebrew then. Yeah, on a pilot kit. So we've only produced forty eight cans yeah. here as as well. Bloody delicious. The reason why I said earlier I quite like an American stout, because take away the pastry elements of stout. Usually my experience with an American stout is it's quite on the dry side, almost like an Irish dry stout. And that's why I really like it. And this one is hitting all the right notes for that. So to have this as a homebrew, and when you said come second, and then they said, but then for the Sheffield Clives with Thornbridge, yeah, not a bad brewery to lose out to. But I'm curious to know what that first bit, what I'd, I'd love to, I, yeah, I want to know what they brewed yeah. to, to, to have won it um, over this, because this, like you say, this is an incredible beer. I mean, flavor wise, it is doing everything. It's got, it's got, it's got the bitter notes. There's, dark chocolate bitterness in that and then there's just the most subtle hint of kind of it's a little bit of red berries red red fruits yeah. in that as it well it feels like a, a little bit a little hint of the molasses coming through is, yeah. what, is the only thing that's adding the sweetness for me so it doesn't feel like that sort of pastry stout feeling it's just got a little bit there I think the red berries is a really good descriptor actually again really well balanced so well balanced this again very drinkable hasn't got a really thick mouthfeel either no it's it's light but you but it's got good body yes to it this is the first beer out the free but i'd say okay probably is gone over that sessionable strength it feels it it yeah i'd i'd, I'd still probably be able to drink a pint of it oh yeah don't get me wrong I and, and, and i'd, I'd contemplate going back for a second because it's got a nice mouthfeel without being that thick mouthfeel yeah but it feels like it's got a bit more going on a absolutely feels like a really complex beer actually there's so much going on in it and, and like I said I, I think it's brilliant it's a collaboration between an established commercial brewery and a homebrew club yeah. and again I like that little bit of nostalgia that the guys that now own Brew York have given them actually out. came from the homebrew club yeah and they've given the homebrew club a permanent outlet presumably to, yeah. to play essentially that's what they're doing yeah it's like all their dreams rolled into one, so they're not in their shed, they're not in their garage, they're not using the bathtub in the kitchen. They've got a kit. 
What a great beer. To you, these are fantastic. That's beer. Beer. No, thank you very much. We would have been happy with one. Yeah. Let's with, be honest. What we were saying, yeah. we were If you had said with. you'd given us one out of 48, we would have been bloody happy with that. Yeah, absolutely. So while you're in Sherbog... Enjoying your beers, yeah, yeah, and, and while I'm drinking all the IPAs at Colonel, yeah, I've gone all anti Brexit. Um, let's uh, let, let's see what our listeners thought when when we asked the question this week. Opinions, 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 opinions. So we struggled with how to ask this one. It's fair to say, yeah. isn't it? Um, and we eventually came up with, can you name your top three? Pubs, bars, or tap rooms that will be in your fa- fantasy pub crawl. It's got to be said, not a lot of votes this week. No, but it wasn't about the votes. No. It was about getting people into this discussion. It ended up being fairly close anyway. Fifty-one percent said yes. Forty-nine percent said no. Um, but we had over seventy-five comments, which um, when you when you brought them all together, they suggested somewhere in the region of 150 plus different venues to go to 75 comments we've had less than that when we've had our thousand plus votes yeah so a lot of a lot of people commenting on 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 this week and i really enjoyed some of the suggestions i really enjoyed the fact that some people went off in very in a few different directions as well yeah we'll we'll, we'll come on we'll come on to that but it it was good but we had some venues if if we go in terms of how far you could have possibly gone we (laughs) did New Zealand and Hawaii. I wasn't expecting Bangkok to end up in there. I have to. Oh, I, I wasn't. It's not known for craft beer, possibly. No, well, not not the couple of times I've been there, but it's a little while since I've been back there. Um, one of us, me, had to put together a spreadsheet to kind of bring all of these suggestions together. Also, you love doing it. Oh, I didn't love doing this one. Um, it really didn't help with our listeners when I, I know they get really enthusiastic and I love it that they tag the place is in but excel doesn't recognize the at symbol it recognizes it as yeah, something no, else it so it's, part of a sum it, it's really difficult when you're trying to do something that sums up everything but um the top suggestions for, from our listeners so the one that ended up out on top mm. was the marble arch with nine votes oh really yeah um lots lots of people suggesting the marble arch after that, the one that came next was uh, a place that we've both visited, and neither of us can pr- pronounce, uh, Tibruj Bertie in Bruges. Funny you should mention that one. Okay, um, <laughs> that was the next one. And then tied for third place was uh, War Pigs Brew Pub in Copenhagen, which, which I've been to, uh, and I enjoyed my experience there. Beer and meat, that's all you need. And The Grove in Huddersfield. So a really strong showing for the UK here. In, that in is really good of, because I mean the uh, the early voting was definitely leaning towards a few more abroad. Oh, absolutely. Um, and I mean the Marble Arch came through there. Yeah. Because the early early numbers weren't as impressive. So that's really no, good. It really came through. Some honourable mentions also to uh, Beer Nouveau in Manchester, uh, who we've mentioned already this evening, who got as many votes as. Russian River in Santa Rosa in San Francisco. Well, that's not a bad company to be in, is it? No, absolutely not. And then also uh, a tie-in on votes as well was Bucks and Tap House and Omnipolo, which is, again, quite nice seeing as they collaborate they, on so many beers. So many beers, don't they? Yeah. So, so that, that's what our listeners was, were, were saying in terms of the places that they'd like to visit. Um, in terms of the listener that asked the question, so Paul at UNRCD, his top three would have been The Hope in Carshalton, which and is at... And for anyone who follows Paul, know that that's where he lives on a Thursday night. Yeah, freq- and, and frequent other nights as yeah. well. I think it's on his way home. Uh, he also suggested the Marble Art and also Monty's in Edinburgh. As, as, Monty's as well. not familiar with. I'm I'm not familiar with that one either. But I did notice but, that uh, Ronnie, who uh, always comes to the Crimbo Crawl, follows us. Also, said, wasn't familiar with it. No, but he did know. He did write noted. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I think if if nothing else, what this gave us was a list of places that we might need to visit if ever we go to certain yeah. towns. I mean, the, the, this one, this uh, is worth saving. So whatever you have put in the spreadsheet is worth saving. I think because <laughs> there are places there that if we're getting. Effectively, these are personal recommendations. Yeah, and that's that's what I loved about this. People got really personal. Yeah, uh, about this one as well. So, uh, Michael at Mick Grority, uh, can we go back in time? Mine would be the Euston Tap, Hanging Bat, and Buxton Tap House, 
all from 2013 to 14. If we can't go back in time, I'd probably go for Euston Tap for its cultural significance. Magic Rock Tap because I've still not been, and the Free Trade In because it's the Free Trade In. Okay, well, Free Trade In's already had a shout out from you. As uh, this Magic Rock Tap. <laughs> Magic Rock Tap's already had a shout out from you. Um, Paul suggested Marble Arch, which was on your list and was on my long list. Yep. Um, remind me, where's the Hanging Bat? That's in Edinburgh as well. I'm sure that's in Edinburgh. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. Yes. Um, is that one of the places that River and Brews went to when they went up to Edinburgh? Mm. Um, Bucks and Tap House, I still haven't been to. Um, Euston Tap, I'm not as much of a fan of it as I used to be, but I get what he says about the cultural significance. Do, do you see that in terms of its cultural significance? I think so. It was definitely one of those places which was quite early on of being just that sort of tap. And from the Euston Tap, we got a lot of the other ones, didn't we? So Pelt Trade is part of the same group. Waterloo Tap. Yeah, and taps all up the country as well. There's a little bit. Of, part of there's group, all a bit yeah. of a link there, isn't it? And that was probably a proof of concept almost. Yeah. So it still works. I still have a drink there if I'm if I'm in the area. If, if you're passing, you'd go and in it, there. It's only if it's too busy inside when it's the wrong, wrong sort of weather, but it's a bit uncomfortable in there because it just is small. Yeah. You need it to be nice so you can just sort of be outside. Spread out. Spread outside mm-hmm. a little bit. Looking at the bus station. Yeah. Uh, Chicken Dipper at Graham Salander says, uh, first up it would be Tornado San Francisco for a pint of five of Pliny <laughs> before exploring the other taps. Now I looked that up on, 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 yeah. on, on online and um, their most recent picture was their beer board and uh, a pint of Pliny was about five dollars. Which Fuck. Sorry. Really, which really upset me because I was like we literally kill to try and get that beer over here but you can go to this bar in San Francisco and get it for five dollars a pint. I can understand the pint or five now. Or, or, or five, absolutely. Uh, then he'd head to Magic Rock Tap for whatever they've got before nipping down to Cornwall to while away uh, to while away a few hours at Verdant. I need. I might need longer than just one day. I know what you mean, Graham. I know what you mean. Just just hopping around the place. Uh, Jamie H at Merchants of Shite said, "Ooh, nice." Right then, I'm starting at Jasper Brewing Co. for lunch in Canada, then being magically whisked to Founders for an afternoon of CBS, and I'll be finishing in Bottle Grove, Eastbourne, because then I can get home easily. (laughs) Good day out, that. Well, I don't think you need to worry about easily getting home if you're able to get magically whisked somewhere earlier on in the journey. That's that's true, but I like... like, See, this is what I liked. I like the thinking that some people put into this, which is actually... You can skip around the world and go wherever you want on yeah, some well, of these. Yeah, I'm going to be skipping around the world shortly. Um, so from Codhead72 at Codhead72, might need a TARDIS, my, my kind of listener. Um, the Mount of Vaults Fleetwood, 1989, the Woolly Gelf and the Grapes Liverpool. Yeah, the Grapes Liverpool. That, which is where we finished your stag. That's where we finished the stag, yeah. Oh, cool. It's great that that got a mention. And it was a nice pub. It was a nice place to finish because a lot of the rest of Liverpool City Centre was properly banging, weren't it? I I think it was the perfect place to finish because it took us just outside of that real central area. But it wasn't quite in there. It was still busy. It was still busy, but it wasn't crowded busy. It was nice. You you know, the the group that you were kind of sharing a a whip with... You managed to get a table, didn't yeah. you? And you all sat down. I think Clayton and I and Matt basically propped up the bar. Yeah, you were held up the bar because it looked like it was a bit shaky. Yeah. So well done, yeah. boys. Well, we, we, we were holding up the bar and saving that gin from falling to the floor yes. while we were there, yeah. Not that there was much left of it to fall. <laughs> um, from Sarah Clark at Lundoon Hammer. Start off at the Anchored in Worthing Micropub, then magically, a bit more magic here. I think there's a, some I, Harry I, Potter I love going a bit on here. Of magic, yeah. uh, magically arrive at the Dodo Micropub in Hanwell before finishing an Express Tavern Pub Garden in Brentford. I know none of those. Neither do I. Big fan of micropubs by the sounds of it. There's a real theme going on yeah. there, isn't there, with the micropubs? So um, again, just to have some some new choices is fantastic, isn't it? That's that, that's great. I mean. Again, if you're ever in that part of the world... I now know. You, you've now got suggestions as to where you should visit. Yeah, I think it's brilliant. Um, I, I do like the next one. So, from Webden Beer Monster at Barley Wine is Life. Voted no. Far too hard to pick just three. Then I read the comments. The Marble Arch, the Grove and the Free Trade Inn would make a tidy afternoon out. You'd do well to do all of them in an afternoon. However, but ask me again next week and the answer might be different. Or maybe not. Don't know. I quite like that. It's yeah, probably yeah. right, actually. 
this list could change again, but I, I quite like the fact that he went, no, I can't do it, and then thought, oh, well, maybe I can. Well, it's it's. I I could have done this all day long in 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 terms of working out what what, what places I was going to go to, but the the one that came up again and again and again in terms of a UK point of view was the Grove in 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 Huddersfield, yeah. which I have not been to, I despite have... my frequency of visit in Huddersfield well, it is, it's the wrong way from the station yeah do you remember for, when we did go for that pre yeah. Greenbow crawl um, David Martin was with us and we went there and he did actually mention the Grove but he did point out it is the opposite direction to going to Magic Rock Town yeah. and by the time you get to the Grove if you want to get do it in an afternoon then you probably do need to do a taxi from the Grove to Magic Rock Town so the station is pretty much equal distance to from the Grove both places. and to the tap therefore yeah you're good 35 minutes in between both. But you've been there. Yeah. Did it appear on your long list? Uh, did it make the long list? Because clearly you've already moved out of the UK in terms of your final eight, so we know we're not going there now. It didn't, but I think it's only because I didn't actually spend long enough in there. But when I was in there with Mark, uh, both me and Michelle said to him, A, we can understand why you love it so much and why you come in. And I could have seen myself settling in. So if Magic Rock hadn't been somewhere that we both wanted to go and visit there would have been no incentive to have left the Grove okay well that's that, that's that's a good good endorsement for it isn't it nice beer garden again a few different spaces indoors an absolute banging list and fantastic range of cast beers as well um good range of keg yeah I mean it, it felt like somewhere you could set in I can I can I was surprised there was let there wasn't as many there weren't many more Huddersfield fans in there yeah but it's definitely a Huddersfield fan place before the game but, but that gave it a lovely feel because there was quite a good cross section of fans mm -hmm. in there as well so it didn't make it only because I've been only because it was just the one visit for not long enough I, I will get there one day I, I think because I think it's a place that absolutely has to be on the the, the places I need to visit in the yes. UK that's what we need to do a new Place, list places we must visit oh absolutely okay yeah. have fun with that <laughs> oh Days spent thinking about that one. Um, as always, with, with with opinions, and, and particularly this week, we had loads of of, of comments. Uh, far too many for us to go through through them all on the show. Um, but if you do want to to have a look through all those comments, there is a link in the show notes. As always, to the question, click on that. You can see the question. You can see all the responses below. Uh, if you still want to get involved in discussion, use the hashtag opinions, and you may very well appear in this next part of the show. Let us know. Write it down. Let us know. Write it down. Let us know your thoughts and bitter in lingerness. Write it down. First up, we've got. Uh, we had a DM for a mat at Beer Bods, which was, which was quite nice, because obviously in the last show we spoke extensively about them selling the business to Beer Hawk. Yeah. Um, so Matt sent us DM and he said, just listen to the podcast, a really fair, well-balanced piece, I thought, appreciate having the opportunity to contribute. You guys are a real asset to the craft beer community. Hopefully chat soon, Matt. No, oh, thanks that for was, that. It was quite nice that he took the time to come back again and, and to actually listen yeah. to, to, to what we had to say about it. Uh, Richard Taylor at Rich Taylor 1608 top show as always and loving people's views on can sizes I had a 440 mil at Brew York Beer Empress Tonkoko recently this is a world class beer but just a little too much in current can size and no way I was sharing it perfect example of where 330 mil is needed plus if the higher ABV beers went into 330 mil cans there would be more available so more people could buy said products which does it's tie in timely, isn't ties it? Ties in quite nicely with this beer, which, as we said, is we've got two cans of 48. Now, I'm not going to even try and do the math really quickly, but there's got to be another few cans on top of that that done these in 330s. So yeah. you could have had maybe 60 cans of 330s rather than 48 cans. So, yes, you reduce the exclusivity, but not by much, but you do give maybe another 12 people the chance to have the beer. Yeah. So... That's a re that's that's actually a really good point because again, and he's also said, and no way was I was sharing it. So not whether it's clear whether he didn't want to share it <laughs> or, or he hasn't got anyone to share it with. Possibly his partner didn't want to share yeah, it. Exactly. So or possibly he wasn't in the, in an environment where. Yeah. So either way, then once you've opened it, you've got the four forty to do the Empress Tonkoko, quite a decent sized beer, ABV as well. So I can understand where he's coming from. Yeah. But the last bit actually is probably a point which I don't think has been made. 
No, and it's it's a great point actually because I've seen a lot recently about a lot of people are getting very upset with the weekly Verdant releases where they keep missing out on the Verdant. So, so Verdant are releasing beers every Friday. Oh, on, really? On, so I've, I've missed that. On, online. Really? Yeah. So new beer every Friday. And they sell out very, very quickly. And then a lot of people moan about the fact they haven't been able to get out of them. Now, Verdant sell all of their beers in 440 meal cans. So, yeah, they, 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 they've only ever done 440. Yeah. They? So if they were selling them in 330 meals, again, there's a certain percentage of people there that would actually be able to get hold of more of their beers if they were selling them in a smaller package size yeah and it would make it, yeah it makes it easier for people um it's an interesting one isn't it about the whole the 440 can i mean i've really enjoyed not sharing the 440 so far i have but this is the first one i've got to where i thought uh, maybe maybe the 440 wasn't quite what i needed of a six and a half percent stout I'm going to agree with you on that, but I'm also going to give me a reason in why I wanted to can this each. Oh, that's fine. Because I want I wanted to emphasise that point of which is something we've, we've we've said over and over again. A cold stout on a hot day is perfect. Mm. It is, but I think equally I would have found a three thirty equally as perfect at six and a half percent. Yeah, I, I agree actually. Because this is the one which we've done the slowest out of the, mm. out of the one so far. And this was the same ABV as the IPA. Is that because we're worried about what's coming next? Uh, it could be. It could be. Let's not spoil it just yet. <laughs> no, remember the rules. No spoilers. <laughs> okay. Um, so Will Watkins at Dry Your Beers, who listeners may remember, sent us the beers for the last show. So once again, you're welcome. A small price for hundreds of hours of entertainment. And that's just two shows put together. <laughs> Very enjoyable again this week. A beat missing the Monday night slurring I'd planned for. Sorry about that, Will, but... I think that's because we were sharing them. I think you were sharing, so you need to send us 10 beers. Had, had we done a... A beer a, each a of share, those. Like, yeah. If there had been a beer each of those, then you would have oh, got... Oh, by the time we got to the end of that dogfish head, I would have been on the floor. <laughs> would have been a good way to go, though. Yeah. Um, read the 120-minute IPA. I had a bottle on Christmas Eve as beer of the year 2019, and it was the beer you described to see. I had a bottle the other night, and it was completely different. From another shop too. I'm pleasantly sweet and syrupy with a crude burn. Sounds like the old warehouse aged yeah. kind of American beers we were used to about five years ago. Um, obviously send you the wrong bottle. <laughs> uh, not from our point of view. No, no, we had the right bottle. We Thanks, definitely Will. had the right. Uh, the oddest beer and food combo is the continued existence of restaurants serving fantastic food with dozens of carefully selected wines and nothing but macro beer. Manning. Brilliant. It's a great shout. Great shout. I think that's another show there as well, isn't it? Oh, uh, definitely. Uh, at some point for us to for, for us to do. Definitely, so many places. Uh, from number one, no, current number one fan, Paul at UNRCD. Great episode, great beers. Even with all the beer hawk news, the worst bit of news was about howling hops getting rid of their tankard glasses. Why? I could almost feel Paul crying. <laughs> so, so could I, but when that, he said that it. was our reaction to yeah, it. So right. I was like, why are you getting I, rid I, of them? I like them. They're unique. They, they're you. Yeah, the, the glasses are unique. The tank's unique. Why, why muck around with that bit of it? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Sean O'Reilly at Uncrulia. Um, I think we put this challenge out to him and he stepped up to the challenge once As again. Ever. A US brewery barrel holds 31 US gallons, which is 26 Imperial UK gallons or 208 Imperial pints. So other half with their 14,000 US barrels are producing 364,000 Imperial gallons or 2,912,000 Imperial pints. Or to use your preferred measurements, 16,547 hectolitres. He still didn't actually tell us how many UK pints. Yeah, UK was. pints was a bit, but just on a, a, a slight tangent... Sean posted a, a tweet, or, sorry, a series of tweets yesterday of um, a number of the old beer o'clock shows. He's still going back through them, isn't he? Yeah. And base, a lot of it is to do with uh, going back to the uh, the start of the prizes prize. Yeah. Um, the number one fan competition, as it was then as well. Um, loving his summary of the shows. Loving his summary of the shows. It was a 19-tweet masterpiece, wasn't it? Yes. Yes. It, it really it was. was. brilliant. And there, there was one in there as well from... Um, it was it was covering the show where we did the interview with uh, John Keeling from Fuller's. Which was then your longest show by quite some distance. an hour and 49 minutes, which 
quite short in terms of what we put out these days, but that um, friend of the show, Justin Mason, at the time said it was the greatest thing he'd ever heard. Yeah, but let's face it, Mr. Keeling is always worth a listen. Oh, absolutely. And I'm not sure what you would have cut out. Unless he said we, we didn't cut out a lot of it. Unless, let's, let's unless he was going to say something libelous, you don't cut it out, do you? Because it's, it's Mr. Keeling. Um, great show, chaps. Um, and this is from Guzzler. Agreeing with Gregor J comments really rang true with me. 500 milliliter Colonel Pale Ales are essential. Also agree that the price of 440 milliliter cans don't add up. I mean, that was a reply to the comment which we read out on the show at that time as well. Um, and linking in from Gregor J. Since listening to the show, in brackets great as always, thank you very much. I have to concur with Steve. If Colonel moved to Canning, I would pack it in. <laughs> Colonel represent everything I want in beer. Cheers, Gregor. <laughs> just, just me and you, mate. When Colonel start canning, we're out. We'll, we'll start a new gin club so or, they, or something. If they start canning, does that mean you're not going to their tap room? Well, I'll go to their tap room before they start canning. Oh, uh, what if they do the two together? Exclusive tap opening mm, with cans. I'm not so sure about that. Final comment this week then from Mark Johnson at Mark and Johnson. All of my initial Axe experiences were in 500ml bottles. So 440ml cans always felt normal. I'm still fine with the bigger sizes, though agree on 330ml being better for train beers. For me, the debate is less about size and more about the styles that should be in bottles over cans. Anyway, great show. Thinking of Axe Edge in 500ml bottles has made me miss kind of sunset. It's probably been a poll before, but reminiscing over lost or discontinued beers is always an idea. I thought they said, kind, said Kinder Sunset, sorry. I went for Kinder. Okay. Um, brackets, not just Magic 8 Ball. I mean, that's another good one to do. That is another good one to do. We've both drained that beer while we've been going through that, the American style. I will reiterate, I loved it. I loved the dryness at the end, especially. That one, I wouldn't have minded it being a 330. Or maybe we should have shared the four. Maybe we should have shared a four forty. But there will be times when you're on your own, and I think the three thirty still would have been better for me. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, absolutely. So, talking of sharing four forties, yeah, we decided we should share this one. Yeah, and there's a reason for that. Yeah, because of largely all of its ingredients. Right. Would you like to share with the listeners what beer we've got, Steve? So this is Imperial Tom Coco. It's a coconut, chocolate, tonka and vanilla imperial-ish milk stout. Imperial-ish? Imperial-ish. Doesn't say that on the list. At 7.5%. So, Lee said he promised not to... He knows he promised not to send us the, the, the coconut tonka beer. But he couldn't resist. Knows occasionally we step outside our comfort zone and it always seems to be me taking one for the team. So, suggesting that Martin liked to might like to step up to the plate for this one um they make several beers to this style this is the mid-strength one and the reason he had to include it is it's currently ranked the second best stout in the world on rate beer okay well first i'm gonna go really before i've had it yeah and secondly is this then related to the empress tom coco that richard referred to in bittering lingam i think empress tom coco is possibly the top end the bigger, yeah, and then there's I think there's one simply called Tom Coco. So you could almost so Tom, I think I may have had the Tom Coco. So yeah. Tom Coco is less than this. Yeah. So there's effectively a Tom Coco run. There's a, there's a double, yeah, but essentially, yeah. There's a Tom Coco yeah, run. Yeah. Um, he does go on to say they hand toast all of the coconut for super fresh and authentic taste, and our use of Tonka is restrained compared to some other breweries. So hopefully, you're brave enough to try it. Well, we are brave enough. We've got it in the glass. I do seem to have more than you. No, that's, that's the head. Look, well, it's the head with tension. It's more in the glass, doesn't it? Cheers. Cheers. Okay, not getting too much of the stuff I don't really want on the nose. There's a hint of marzipan on the nose, which for me comes from the tonka. I'm not getting the marzipan on the nose because that would also be another There's a lot of sweetness opposite. in that. Yeah, um... I'm almost getting like flaked coconut. Yeah. Those flavours are a little bit sticky. I'm going to say that for me. Yeah, but we, we will persist. We'll have a bit more. Um, thank you for not letting me do the challenge on my own and having to drink oh, 440. I, 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 I'm, I'm a team player, mate. You are a team player. I'm absolutely a team player. Um, 
let's do a couple more stops on our pub call. Couple more we, stops. We've we've been sat where we were for a long time. I mean, I have been properly enjoying the Colonel IPAs. Um, and I've where where was I? I was in beers. So yeah, I've spent a few yeah. hours in there before. So yeah, I was fine. Where are you going next, mate? Um, I'm staying on the continent, and I'm going to a bar that was mentioned earlier. Um, so I'm off to Bruges. Okay. To the T Bruges beer tea. I can never say it. Yeah, well, everyone knows what, what the place is yeah. talking about. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure that it's going to be plenty of people who can tell me how to say it better, and I'll still say it wrong. And it is. If you go to Bruges, it's definitely one of the pubs you have to visit, in my opinion. People, it's on the list. Yeah. People do seek it out. Opens at four o'clock, and whatever time you get there, you're probably not going to be first in the queue. Someone else is already going to be in the queue waiting to get in. Although it's not, from my experience, it wasn't as much a queue. It was kind of people loitering in the street, waiting for it to open. Not so much wanting to be a queue. Yeah, but it's a queue. Yeah. Um, lovely. It's got a lovely feeling to it. Um, it doesn't It doesn't feel like a bar. It doesn't feel like a pub. It almost feels like an extension of someone's front room. Yeah, abs- absolutely agree. A multi-front yeah. room like, with a lounge and a dining area. Um, food is sort of limited certainly when I was there a couple of years ago cheese and ham toasted sandwiches and a few other nibbles maybe some cheeses the beer I would have in there because I've only, I generally tend to end up in Bruges in like the colder months would be like the Hercule Stout I went for the Didol Extra Stout when I was in there okay so same uh, style stout. and then I was there not too long ago and it was a hot day but I still felt like I needed a stout yeah I would go for it I'd go for a stout in there it's got a fantastic bottled beer menu yeah. available to you. That's that's what I went straight to because I looked at the taps and I was like, you know what, I'm I'm done with Belgian beer right now. I, I need I need something else. Yeah, and when you have the dark beers, it doesn't feel like you're having an overtly no. Belgian beer, does it? Absolutely not. No. Um, so I know exactly what you're saying. It's almost like the perfect bit. But again, those snouts come in it. Like I think the Hercules ten percent. Yeah, the I was at nine and a half yeah. or something. Um, me and Michelle were in there. It was either New Year's Day or the day after. Pro- it was properly cold in Bruges, and having a stout and then like some sort of toasted sandwich just felt like it was like the perfect moment. So when when does a toasted sandwich not go with a stout, or become a perfect moment? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, that, that's that. So I've gone to Bruges. So that's uh, stop number six, I think, on on the list. Yep. Um, I'm now moving miles away. Uh, oh, so, so you're going off. You, you, you're just going now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whether it be by magic or air travel, um, I'm going to end up in uh, Phoenix, in okay, Arizona. that's quite a leap. Yes. From from where you were. Yes, I, I'm going to Phoenix to King's Beer and Wine, um, a place I found when I went to Phoenix with uh, Michael, my son, in 2017. And um, it was a place I'd seen when I'd gone out for a run on the very first morning right along one of the tram lines lovely little transit system in in uh, Phoenix two dollars for a return journey or four dollars for the whole day brilliant and um, so they have the TVs in there for the sport obviously American sport and baseball American football they've got TVs hooked up to the old uh, Nintendo as in the SNES oh nice so, good start already. Bit of game in. Yeah, uh, but literally it's split into two halves. One half is the shop and one half is the bar. Both of them have independent doors from the street, but then it's like almost like a secret door between the shop and the bar. And obviously it's not a secret, but it feels like one because you go from the shop to the bar. Yeah. And very different. Bars or The bar is darkly lit, the shop's a bit light lit. It's also where I managed to pick up a couple of Fuller's Vintage Ales, only um, $9.00. Oh, it was 2011. Happy days. So I was quite chuckled there. It was actually cheaper, almost cheaper to fly all the way to Arizona and just get those two bottles of beer <laughs> and bring them back. And um, I think on Sundays, it's like donuts they have on the bar as well. So, you know, Michael was loving it. Donuts and snares. And I think we had some uh, Yang- Jenga going on as well. And I just had a fantastic range of beers while I was in there. So the beer I would have if I went back there again, if I went at the same time of year, would have been... The Stone Go To IPA. Oh, nice. It was just tasting fantastic yeah. the day I was in there. Really good. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I would do when I was there. Okay. And also, perfect on a hot day, which pretty much every day in Arizona. Crushable. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, 
I'm going from London, which was my last stop in Colonel. Uh, I'm going to jump on a short plane ride and take me to Dublin um, to a bar that we did go to when we were there recently, yeah. Alfie Burns. That was on my list. Which was, uh, it's essentially, for all intents and purposes, it's a, it's a hotel bar. It's a bar. hotel bar. But it's amazing. Yeah. It's really open. I've been there, uh, every visit I've had to Dublin, uh, particularly where I've been escorted by Wayne and Janice, um, we've always gone via Alfie Burns. And they've always got the most amazing selection of beers. It is one of the Galway Bay bars. So they've always got Galway Bay beers. And that was a good selection they had on as well. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and for me, I've, I've had food in there. It's just got such a lovely feel, just a lovely atmosphere from it. It's Again, it's slightly away from the town centre, so it's not touristy busy. It does have that hotel bar feel, because that's what it is. It's in the basement of a hotel. Um, but I'm going to find myself sat in Alfie Burns, drinking, <laughs> what would you expect, a Foam and Fury. That's that. That's what. Is what, that what you had? Is that what you had? No, it there? wasn't. It wasn't on when we were in there. But they did have. It didn't really matter what they had on. What they had on wasn't dark beer. After we had spent two days drinking nothing but dark beer at the International Stout Festival, we needed hops, and we went in there and we had hops in in, in Alfie Burns, and that's that's my next stop where we're going to sit, and I'm just going to sit, and I'm just going to enjoy a nice double it's... IPA. It has got a lovely feel, but it's also a hidden gem. Yeah, absolutely. Because I hadn't been there before. And so we went over there and we said we're going to go to Alfie Burns. So I'm thinking it's going to be quite well advertised from the outside. And then we go down the side of this actually rather posh looking hotel. Yeah. And we were looking very posh hotel kind of people at the time. And um, suddenly we end up in effectively a Galway bar, bar at the bottom of a hotel. Really big bar as well. It's huge. We have a fantastic range of Galway Bay and, beers and on. And there are pool tables and the food is great. It's just, Cup of TVs as well. Yeah. It's lovely. I can imagine it getting busy at times, but I don't ever feel as though you'd ever feel like it was too much in well, there. Well, we went there on a Friday night, didn't we? Yeah. It wasn't packed. It was relatively empty on yeah. Friday night. It felt, but it, it was it was the perfect space at the right yeah. time. And you are right. So while I bemoaned, when I went to Magic Rock and there was no dark beers on, I was quite happy to turn up at Alfie Burns and, and just go... Have all the hops. Yeah, I just yeah. want hops now, please. Hops in my face. I spent quite a lot of time yeah. not drinking hops. That's fine. Um, I need to make a correction to my King's beer and wine. Um, I, knew, I knew it was wrong when I was in Phoenix. I knew it, I didn't have go-to IPA. I had an almost end of life enjoy by stone. Oh, okay. So one of those. Yeah, I knew it was wrong when I was saying it. So apologies for that. So correction live. Um, I had one of their ones enjoy by the end of October when I was there, probably about a week before it was about to die. Still tasting fantastic. I mean, it was still tasting good, though. It was still tasting yeah. good. So, I mean, it's only got a short shelf life anyway, so it's still relatively fresh in the yeah. scheme of things. And that's what I had there. That was one of the best beers I had in there. So, a little bit of a correction there. Love the Alfie Burn shout. That that was the one I was most unsure about. Oh, was it? Well, it because there. it was a hotel bar? Well, it was it was a hotel bar, and I'm, I'm, I'm guessing our listeners from Ireland will probably be screaming, saying, oh, there are so many better Galway Bay bars than that. I just really like it. I, I love that that yeah, but, feel that yeah, it's, it's a hotel yeah, bar. It's different to the other one. So, yeah. um, so what's the other one that near Talbot Street? Oh, uh, Brewdock. Yeah, um, very uh, completely different. Yeah, Brewdock feels all of like their bars are though. Brewdock feels like yeah. a craft bar. Then they've got the one which is like almost looks like a small shop from the outside. Again, completely different feel to both of those two. So I think that's fine. I mean, if I rocked up at a hotel as me as I am now and I found there was a craft bar downstairs oh can you imagine how I'm happy not, you'd be? I'm not going anywhere no I'm, not, I'm, I'm going down and then I'm going back up to my room later and on. that's it yeah, that's, 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 that's all almost I'm like, doing it's almost like the perfect hotel absolutely apart from the fact that I don't reckon that hotel's cheap no I don't think it is because it like I said it did look posh that hotel yeah but it is just it's nicely on the outskirts of Dublin city centre. Yeah, not a million miles away, but it well. is on the outside. No, I think when when we were over, we stayed that the place we stayed in was on Saint Stephen's Green, and it was literally a five minute walk from yeah. there back to back to our hotel. But yeah, no, um, that's a good shout. I like that one. Thank you. Uh, also, logistically good for me as well because my next beer or my next bar is a, a short hop across the Atlantic, so I'm I'm going from. 
Ireland over to the States. Are you going to the East Coast, Steve? I am going to the East Coast. Where am I going on the East Coast? I reckon you're going to Gar City. Oh, you've, you've absolutely nailed it. I am, <laughs> I am absolutely going to Cigar City. I am flying into Florida. I'm going down to Tampa and I am spending many, many hours drinking in the Scar City tap room. I remember how much you enjoyed that little visit you had and the little time, the time you spent with them and the fresh, and I did enjoy the fresh beers you brought back from there as well. I was, it was, it was too short a visit for me. I would love to have spent many hours in there, but it was also my first experience of an American tap room and it's an amazing space. It is really an amazing space when you go to, to somewhere where they've really thought about the design, the layout, how they present their beers, how they want you to taste their beers, how you can select beers in sizes and flights and all the rest well, of it. it's definitely the model for a lot of the tap rooms over here, yeah, isn't it? Abs- Not to absolutely. Not per yeah. se, but the American tap room yeah. is a working model for what we've developed over here. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that because the ones I've been to... Fantastic. There's a on my long list, a few definitely made the long list. I mean, Harpoon last year and Trillium definitely made the long list from last year. Uh, but again, I've only been there a couple of times. So, you know, probably need to spend a bit more time in there. But fantastic spaces they create. Yeah. It was like I say, it was too short a time for me. I only had a few hours and I'd love to go back and just drink all the high line. Basically, yeah. Just <laughs> just drink that entire keg dry. <laughs> Before going on to some of their amazing darker stuff. Yeah, as, no, as, and as well. It's a great shout. Great shout. Um, not a bad little, it's probably not a bad little hop from Dublin, actually. No, see, so I've, I've, I've thought about it. You've already shaved off an hour there as well. On the, yeah, on the by way. going to, going to Dublin. going to Ireland, yeah. And you can actually fly to, can't you fly to America via Dublin from the UK? Not, not from, I, I'm not sure it's from Dublin, but there is a, there is a, one of the airports was in it Dublin. Cork? Yeah, you can do the American passport control. At this, in Ireland, yeah. So and then you're done. Yeah, you, yeah. You're you straight. Then off Then you the become effect, effectively internal transfer or something. Yeah, because yeah. it can be a bit of a queue on the American yeah. side. That's good. Um, before we get to my last one, because that, that I think is it your eight done now. Uh, no, that's my that's my seven. That's done. Your We've seven. got one more. One eight. more to go. Okay. That's so good. let's. Um, what do we think? It's all right. It's got there, there are elements in there I don't like. See, the thing, yeah, I think there are elements I don't like. But because there's more than one element I don't like. The elements I don't like have sort of balance themselves out. Does that make sense? It, so that Tonko bean, and I didn't get any marzipan pan fortune because that would have been three elements, um, and the coconut, I think have sort of worked and almost started to cancel each other out. I'm getting no coconut from it. I'm going to say that right now. Oh, I definitely got the coconut. But the thing on. that's most predominant for me is the Tonko bean, which 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 I know I don't like. Is the Tonko bean poisonous? Is there something about why I made that up? I fucking hope not. After drinking, no, I don't mean in the amounts oh. they put in beer, but they legally sell in the UK. But I thought I had in my head that there was some sort of element of poisonous about Tonko. But again, I'm sure that uh, Brew York can correct me on that if I'm yeah. completely wrong. It's it's not something I go for. It really isn't. Um, it was enjoyable enough. I'm, I'm going to say it's probably <sighs> my least favourite of the beers we've had so far. But I can definitely see why people would like it because there's a lot going on. Oh, there's lots of flavour in it. I mean, there is and lots it's got, going on. It's got on. a good mouthfeel as well. I mean, it's it's not thick, no, nope. but it does it does coat well, the mouth and it coats the glass. I mean, I'm going to have to give this one a little bit of a rinse because that's left, you know, a bit like having a nice little red wine. Yeah. Isn't it? Well, while you rinse that, let's go on to some listener questions. Questions, questions, fill my head. First up again from number one fan Paul at you and RCD. What brewery do you think goes under the radar that deserves to be more highly recognised? For me, it's Dalman's Brewery, who are based in West Sussex. Every beer I have is great, but I usually get attracted by more fashionable breweries. Is there any um, breweries that stand out for you? That go well, I've had a bit of a list weekend. Oh, you've gone for a whole list. I went for one that really leapt out at me. I've got a few. Okay, can I say around one and see if it's on your list? Go then. Siren? No. Okay. Because I don't think they go under the radar quite as much as they used to. Mm. Probably if they'd been asked because a month of the ago, whole can thing for, now. Possibly, yeah. Okay. Done the crowdfunding and the cans. Yeah. I think they've upped up their game. Um, I had a few on there, and I did end up with one at the end. Um, the first one, which sprang to mind for me, is a brewery from Yorkshire who are predominantly a cask brewery, Great Heck. 
Oh, okay, that's quite a good shout. Actually. And I love their cask beers. And I looked on my Untapped, and I've had a fair selection of them. Um, a lot of them have come through the Victoria Inn because of the Yorkshire connection with Andy and Sheena. Um, but I also had places on there like Howling Hops, Moor as well. Um, in London, One Mile End, Redemption. Don't tend to get a lot of noise yeah. because maybe because of where they're based. Um, Roosters as well. Oh, Roosters is a great show. And I think they, they've they made some fantastic beers for years. Babyface Assassin is one of the best beers ever brewed. Yeah. In every format. I was going to say that, not just in any yeah. one particular format. Um, I think the, one of the breweries I did end up uh, going on, and it sort of took me back to when we were there for the crim, pre Crimbo Crawl, uh, was Wiper and True. Again, another great shout. Yeah, made they got some fantastic beers. We had a cracking time in there on the Friday night yeah. before the Crimbo Crawl, and they hardly make any noise on I, social I media. I hardly see anything about Wiper and True these days. So, although I did make a list, um, and there's, I think there's some excellent shouts in there, Wiper and True these days I don't really see much from them at all. No, that is a that is a great. Like shout. I said, a lovely time yeah. in their space, and I reckon there's again, I'd love to hear what other people think, what other breweries are under the radar yeah let us know let us know use the hashtag opinions let us know which breweries you think uh, fly under the radar um, next question so from discomrobulated at discomrobulated <laughs> glad you read that one out I'm guessing this I'm guessing this is from Rob who's inserted his name into discombobulated is in, instead of discomrobulated uh, do you find yourself buying less beer locally these days and more online I think it's a bit of a brief answer for me not so I've noticed, because wherever I live locally, whether it be North Essex or South Essex, um, apart from, say, two brews in Colchester, which was just not that convenient for me at times, yeah. I've never really had the option to buy beers. I'm, I'm going to assume this is a take-home, take-away question, drink-at-home question. Yeah. Um, I've never really had that many places to get from, so no, it feels the same to me. Okay. Uh, he's got a second question. Is it ever okay to... You didn't answer. Um, I'm oh, sorry. Um, I do get to two brews occasionally these, these days because it is more on my... What's on your routine? On, on my radar. Uh, and I will go there if I'm looking to buy uh, some tasty beers, something a, a little bit different. Um, I don't really buy online either though. Um, but I guess what how I do buy... It's kind of a combination of the both. It's, I, I buy my beers from Beer Central, which is a, a, a local bottle shop in Sheffield that you kind of buy from... No, yeah, I mean, Michelle buys from that. Via Twitter. Oh, I probably should give a shout-out to Licorice, who, where we used to record. I did sort out a number of my beers for the wedding from them. Okay. So thank you very much, yep. for Dan, for sorting that out. Um, you've just poured another beer. I've poured, some, I've poured some fruit juice. That is looking... Because I decided we'd had enough beer. And juicy. And we were going to have some fruit juice. Um, what however... The, what have we got here? It is 10.9% fruit juice. Uh, brewed with vocation by the looks of it. Yeah. M- Medusa. I presume Medusa. it's supposed to be, judging by the snakes. Yes, but spelled... Medusa. Juicy. Cairo Hopped Triple IPA. 10.9%. Brewed in conjunction with vocation. And Steve, over to you for some notes. Uh, not a lot... Of notes, really. Uh, for some reason, whenever they collab with Vocation, it must be an insanely hot triple IPA. Uh, this time it features the latest cl- harvest of Columbus, Citra and Mosaic. And it does look like fruit juice in glass. Right, are we going in? Let's let's do it. Um, Here goes. Yeah, cheers. I'm not sure the smell would bring me in, I have to admit. It's quite vegetal, isn't it, on the nose? Um, that savoury type of onion yeah. nose that's a very thick mouthfeel as well it's quite sugary it's quite sticky what I would say is potentially saving it a little bit for me is there's good carbonation although it doesn't look like it it's still quite fizzy in the mouth yeah almost like a sherbet fizziness but exceptionally juicy yeah exceptionally juicy I'm not sure I've had a ju- juicier beer than this for a while, actually. It's it's certainly not on the side of triple IPA that we would be leaning to. No. No, no, no. When I saw triple IPA, I was going, yes. I mean, I didn't bother reading it. 
No, I didn't. If I, I if I'd read the name of it, maybe I would have thought. Yeah. Not say yes. See, I'm I'm like triple IPA, unhuman cannibal. That's, that's it. it to me, yeah. That's all you're going for. That's so, that's my benchmark. So on these questions, obviously, yeah. a few people did go properly fantasy, didn't they? They did. Did you have any fantasy? So, for example, places from films or TV that you would want to visit if that bar suddenly I, appeared. I I didn't even go there. No. I I. I tried to go with places that either I've been to or that I wanted to go to. Um, and I know there were quite a few people that went for the TV and film genre. Yeah, of, I know it's a of, good one. Uh, I've got to say that a lot of them were a little bit lost on me. Yeah, as well. I think um, um, the part of, I mean, that kicked off a little bit with um, Andrew and Luke from River and Brews. Um, but I did like definitely one of those ones I would go to the Mos Eisley Cantina from Star Wars, where we first I meet got that one. Where we first meet Han yeah. Solo, and then I would uh, I would pop to the Cheers Bar because everyone knows your name, and then I would pop to the Nags Head. Okay. To meet up with Del Boy and Rodney. Yeah. So that was my 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 free fantasy bars would be the if I was doing that one. I, I couldn't do that element of it because I just I literally didn't get the the bars that were being being quoted I think uh, Matt half pint Jen said I'd replace a few of those and go to the Queen Vic I can get the Queen Vic I yeah, get I know that the Queen Vic I don't want to go I get there that reference. everyone's shouting I don't want to go there no not ever do everyone's I want to shouting go there. no the, only, the other one on TV I'd go to would be the Rovers Return I used to be a massive Corrie fan you'd probably get a good pint of sparkled beer in there as exactly. well exactly See, in Manchester. Sparkled Boddington's. Pl proper classic Boddington's. Classic Boddington's. Not what it is now. Not the stuff we have now. Does it still exist now? I'm sure it's sold. It's still Can you still get it in cans? I'm not sure. I'm not sure about anyway, that. Anyway, that, uh, that would be my little fantasy one. Okay, um, so we've got one more stop each to do on our yeah. fantasy crawl. So it's probably time to go for the honourable mentions, those that didn't quite make it to the final list um, I'll go I mean you've got a long list I've got a long list so I'll try to keep the honourable mentions to a, to a little bit shorter but um, I would give an honourable mention to being alone agree um, for no other reason has it not made the long list it's just that it's just more difficult to get to than all the other places I'm not talking about like going from Arizona but once you're in Manchester it's still not the most convenient uh, a half an hour walk yeah. yeah but I've been there twice and I've loved it both times and I will be back this year are you ever going to get a more welcoming environment than being over doubt it no seriously doubt it because Steve is he's so friendly he's so passionate about what he does and he's so willing to share what he does as well Oh god, yeah, and, um, and, and the fact that his entire tap room is made up of second-hand sofas and chairs and everything—it's just brilliant. Oh, it's a lot. It's a, but it's a lovely space. But it is Steve. Yeah. So yeah, um, that would definitely get an honourable mention. Um, I'd also give an honourable mention to the parcel yard at King's Cross. So it is a Fuller's pub, and that won't be to everyone's liking. I did not expect that to come up on the list. I really didn't. I love it. I've got, if you look at my own tap, there's a lot of check-ins. I know you've been to the, the parcel yard a lot of times. And obviously, although it's not made the list, I would stop there on the way to Sheffield. <laughs> you, 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 well, you'd have to, wouldn't you? You know. Yeah. Um, but it would definitely be on on that list. Because I just, I just love going in there. It's got a lovely feel. It's one of those pubs which just has a feel to it as a, as a pub on a station. And um, I reckon, I think finally, is a place which I referenced briefly on a previous show, um, a little bar near where I go to a regular course uh, for work, where I do a bit of training. And that's uh, Vorhav in Vorhalt, which is just outside Sassenheim, about 20 minutes away from Schiphol. Um, somewhere I stumbled on when I was out cycling, when I was over in the Netherlands. Went back the second time, best part of a year later, and I was recognised. So I'm assuming it's for good reasons, as I didn't get chucked out the second time. <laughs> and um, I will go back there again. So that, they're my honourable mentions. Okay. Uh, mine are going to be... Um, first up is the North Bar in Leeds. Um, for being a place that 
I frequented on many occasions and when they, I used to work there. Another place that does cannibal with pints. Probably the reason why I frequented it on many occasions as well, but just um, probably one of the standout innovators in the UK craft beer scene in terms of bars in cities that got it early on. Did you read the piece in Good Beer Hunting by Johnny Garrett? No. Bat North Bar. Fantastic piece. Well worth, as a long read, and it is a long read, it's well worth a read. Yeah. It does read the whole history of North Bar, then the whole brewery as well. Really well, yeah. well worth it. But, so, so for me, that's a place I've been to a lot of times, and I love it there, and yes, Cannibal on Tap. Um, I'm also going to give an honourable mention to The Swan in Stratford St Mary, which is oh. just outside of Colchester. Where... The aforementioned Dead Razzle used to work. Used to work um, for being completely inaccessible to get to. It's a pain in the ass to get um, to. But having one of the greatest beer selections on the Essex Suffolk border. For a country pub as well. Yes. Uh, And really get their beer as well. And get how their beer works with food. Yes. That's that's what they're really good at. And and then the final comment, and I'm, I'm surprised this didn't come up on your list, was Half Acres Tap Room would be a place that I would want to visit. Oh, you see, I, my list consisted of places I have visited. Ah, oh, see, I went for a little bit more of places that I want to or would like oh, to yeah, visit no, my, as well as I took, I, took, I took the view of only going for ones I've been to. The last, my last place would be very interesting then, I, th- I think in terms of where we're going to go next. Okay. But yeah, I mean, I would, I'd love to go to Half Acre. Would be amazing, wouldn't it? You know, I mean, that's, that's just day. drinking some of their... Just sitting there and saying, okay, what have you got? Just pour it all into my Let's face, start please. on the left yeah. and we'll go all the way to the right. Well, it'd be like my Cigar City experience. Yes. That's that's what I would want over again. Be, that would be fantastic. I definitely want to go there. I, mean, what is it, um, I think it's Steve who listens to the show and uh, follows us on various bits of social media. He's been out there a couple of times, I think. I think work takes him in that direction. Yeah. And he goes there and it's like, part of me is going, oh, well done. The other part of me is going, bastard. Well done, yeah, bastard. Hate you, hate you, hate you. <laughs> stop, stop tweeting, stop yeah. Instagramming. Please get off social media. You've managed to finish the beer. Well, it's um, it's a little bit sugary for me. I'm, 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 I'm going to admit, I'm. It's not the sort of triple IPA that I hoped it would be. Right, I have got new glasses out because at the moment I can't finish that. Okay, that's that, that's fair enough. I mean, it's, it is really thick and it is really juicy, and it is really sugary. So there's only one way to go after a 10.9% thick, sugary, juicy, New England IPA star beer. So the only way is up, surely. We go for a um, 14% Mocha Man Randy Savage Imperial Breakfast Milk Stout. Now apparently, now correct me if I'm wrong, this is the beer that got the conversation going between beer o'clock it, show it and was. because this has got some sort of wrestling reference oh come on surely you've heard of the macho man randy savage oh yeah no because when i when i started thinking about this legends of tomorrow the first big villain was vandal savage do you remember yes, the guy with the beard i do remember vandal savage so i was just and every th- time i heard his name i thought randy savage so when you were watching Legends of Tomorrow, the first All series, I think of was Randy, Randy Savage. Savage. Okay, yeah. you um, I'll, look. I'll open it. Start pouring the beer, and you can tell me a bit about the beer and indulge. You, tell, us who, tell us who Randy Savage is. So, so, so Randy Savage was one of the big iconic names in early eighties wrestling. So Hulk Hogan, you must have heard of Hulk Hogan. Yeah. Andre the Giant, Ultimate Warrior. No, you've not heard of Andre the Giant or Ultimate Warrior. No. Okay, so you've heard of Hulk Hogan. Yeah. Randy Savage British was Bulldog. British Bulldog. Yes, he was around that sort okay. of that that sort of time. Randy Savage um, was known as the Macho Man. Randy Savage. I don't know why he was known as that as, as that, but his catchphrase was essentially "Ooh yeah." That was his catchphrase. That's all he ever did. Um, but he was most famously known for um, his manager or valet at the time, who was called Miss Elizabeth, and. Ultimately, they ended up having the first ever wedding in a wrestling ring. Um, he then left his manager, went on to someone else, and then there was this big moment uh, at WrestleMania where it was Randy Savage's... 
basically put his career on a line in a match and he lost and Miss Elizabeth came back to him. And he was, he, he teamed with Hulk Hogan, he teamed with Ultimate Warrior, he was a big name in, in, in wrestling in the 80s. Sadly, he's no longer with us. He, he did pass away uh, a, a few years back. And, and I think it's great that they've named this beer after such an iconic wrestler. And I'm sure all of those wrestling fans that are listening will, will, will get what I'm saying right now. Oh, I'm sure they will. And it's quite a good summary. And as impersonations go, I've got no idea if that's good or bad. I did quite like it. <laughs> so I'm, I'm sure you can search it up on YouTube if you, if, if you want to see it. Oh, yeah! Cheers. Cheers. I mean, that looks thick. That does look thick. It almost looks like a thick brown ale. Yeah. Oh, oh. that's all coffee. Oh, fuck yeah. Literally, I've just poured coffee. I feel like I've poured the bottom of the coffee into my glass. Oh, it's thick and, and it does coat the mouth. Although, mm. that milk stout bit is coming through is that milk chocolate, isn't it? Yeah. Actually, it's reminds me a bit of a milk chocolate milkshake. There's a lot of bitterness going on at the end of that, though. So that's a dark chocolate milkshake if you're going to go with that. No, I'm going milk. I'm going to stick with milk chocolate. Okay, so a little bit about the beer. Um, now I've finished talking about Randy Savage. The rest of them. <laughs> Back to the um, so this was a collab with uh, Turning Point Brew Co. It's part of a two beer ser- series that they're doing across the two breweries. So together they've called it as a tag team. Of course the, they have. The, the Cheaty Lactose Twins. The other twin that they're brewing at Turning Point is called Milk Foley, which is a strawberry milkshake pal. Mick, Mick Foley was a wrestler. Okay. But oh, that's, milkshake. Yeah. Works. It's the same milkshake. Um... And that was brewed at Turning Point. Uh, Mocha Man, as we call him, features our first use of cho- Cholaca, an ingredient just arrived from the US. It's basically pure liquid cacao and has been making some big waves and some of the big names in the US. This amazing coffee that we use in this comes from the Medellin Mountains in Colombia. That's Pablo Escobar territory. So there's a lot of um, ingredients gone into this. Yeah, and quite some name checks in that particular descriptor as yeah. well um i have to admit I'm, I'm enjoying this i'm quite happy i've switched from the triple ipa to this it's certainly an end of evening beer oh it is an end of evening beer i mean it's a thick end of evening yeah. beer but it's not a boozy end of evening beer it's not there's there's not as much booze in this as there was in the triple ipa the triple ipa was was, was far boozy. sort of like a heartburn yeah. kind of booze yeah this is just all smooth it's a lot softer now they did send us four cans of this Thank you very much again. So we're doing one tonight. One on the next show? No, no. we're putting one away for a Oh, they recommended, while. didn't they? Yeah, so they've recommended aging ones. We're going, we'll, we'll come back to that in time. And then we've got a can each for whenever we want it. Oh, brilliant. I can't wait to do, do the aging me, one. Me either. So what are you thinking of here then? Well, you're progressing quite nicely on this one, aren't you? I, I, I am. I'm, I'm, I'm loving it. I've got to say, though, it's possibly the first time I've ever had a murky stout. It's, yeah, it's not descriptive. I would normally have given a stout, but but it, it's 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 thick. You can't you can't see through can you, that. But can you see what I'm saying about being a chocolate milkshake? It does look like a chocolate milkshake. Yeah, it's maybe or a cold hot chocolate or a cold brew coffee. Yeah, it's got that same sort yeah. of thickness to it, hasn't it? I mean, I There's do think so much flavour going on in that. I though. do think this is delicious. I think maybe if it warmed up a bit more, because again, we've taken out the fridge we've, for a hot day. We've gone for it cold, yeah. I reckon if it warmed up, then yes, I think you might start but to get that boozy burn. It is coating the glass. Oh yeah, I mean, it's going to take, it, it's going to take a bit of washing to get rid of this. Yeah. But just briefly dip into the 440s, a whole can of this. I couldn't do it. To oneself. Well, I could do it. Be a long period. Over the course of an evening. It certainly wouldn't be part of a session. No. It would be... I'm maybe going to have two or three beers tonight. Exactly. And you'd enjoy it, but it would. this would be the long... This, long this, 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 this would be the one you'd finish with, and you're not going to do anything after this. No. No. You, you, unless you're going to switch the spirits. That would be it. Unless you... What? Gin? Hasty? Mm, I'm not sure whether I'd go gin after this. I'm not, gin would be a struggle after this. I'd for might me. go sherry after this. Oh, you're disgusting. Sorry about that. Oh, slum uh, kind of good sherry. So, what, so while we're discussing <laughs> my disgustingness, um, we've, we've one more place to visit each on our fantasy pub calls. Yeah, well, I'm staying in the States for okay. my last one. Where are you finishing? Um, 
what I say, I'm saying, say it's obviously one end to the other, or one side to the other. So I'm going to go from Phoenix to Boston. So where I went in 2018, autumn 2018 with Michael. And um, a place we stumbled upon as we were doing the uh, the walking tour of Boston, the historical walking tour, when I spied a sign that said cask beer. And that was it. <laughs> and, and that was it, you were in? I was in, cask beer in the States. And it was a wonderful place. So I tried all three of the cask beer as, as I would. Yeah. Um, we still had one place to do, so then we, um, we went off, we did the last stop and um, came back. And because of the time difference, there was a bit of UK football on. And they earlier mentioned to us about Monday, obviously the Monday night football. So we um, they had a, a food offering and they had the 12 wings for $3. <laughs> 12 wings for $3. Oh, so wow. One wing for 25 cents. So I said, fancy it? And Mike went, yeah, okay. So we went back there, got our two plates of wings. So $6, well spent. Spied on the keg taps, high lie. Loving this place at the moment. And then Michael decided he wanted dessert. I was, no, obviously my dessert was having another beer. Michael's dessert came to more than the 24 wings put together. Really? I mean, again, not an extortionate amount. Yeah. But it was like, you read it on the beer, it was like, so the beer was roughly the same amount as the dessert, and the dessert was twice as much, <laughs> twice as much as two lots of wings. <laughs> But on the Monday night, the place was mobbed. And because it was on... Um, is, that, is that because of the Monday night football? The Monday night football, the wings offer, and the fact that it was on like a newly developed or refer, redone marina. There was quite a few people who come off their boats to come in, have the food, and watch the Monday night football. But it was a wonderful atmosphere. The problem is, you know what I'm like, I'm quite happy to chat about sport. Not so good of American football. I do really <laughs> struggle with that. Apart from a few little bits... That's one of those ones which yeah. I, I, I can't seem to grasp a lot of what's going on. But it was a lovely atmosphere in there. We did go back there once again before we left Boston. So another reason why it made the list is because not only did I want to go there, we did go back there. And it wasn't exactly on our route to anywhere. But I said, do you mind going back? He said, no, that's fine. Well, so we went back. Lovely place. Staff really friendly. Blackmore Bar and Kitchen, Boston. A little bit off the beaten track, but if you decide to go there and you do the, the the Freedom Trail tour, you will go past it. Great recommendation. That's where I finish. My so, well, my finishing stop is kind of a want to go to rather than somewhere I've been to, and and for me it's about going to the place where when when I think back on my beer journey and my craft awakening, there's one beer that always comes back again and again which is Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. So for me, this is about going to Sierra Nevada's tap room and having Pale Ale on draft. Oh, good shout. Over and over again. So Sierra Nevada, Nevada Pale Ale. At their tap room. The five point, because over here we do it on tap, but it's 5%, isn't it? Yeah, it's a bit more over there. Isn't yeah, because five the, and a half. Isn't which it? is the, the bottle strip, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So you want the original version? Yeah, I want the original. Well, I want the original version from the tap room, fresh from the source. I might dip into torpedo while I'm there. If they've got Bigfoot on, I might go for a barley wine as well. But I can see where this evening's going to end up. Steve. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I would love to go to Sierra Nevada's tap room, and and for me, that's that would be the final point on my fantasy pub crawl would be to end up at Sierra Nevada. Okay, so this whole conversation has got me thinking, now I need to do a pub crawl of places I want to go to. I don't think we set any parameters, did we, really? No. It was just like, what eight places? But literally, I, I chose, all of my lists were places I'd have been to. Yeah, see, mine wasn't. Mine was places, mostly, I think, it, only two Yeah. That, that, that haven't been, but yeah. And, and for a long time, in, in that list, Russian River was in there as well, and I was like... I want to go to Russian River. I want to go there and drink Pliny fresh from the taps. And then I was like, yeah, no, I've not, I've not had it enough to be able to appreciate it that much. But Sierra Nevada, Pal Al, had a lot of that beer. And it's a beer, recently again, I've, I've, I've started buying it a lot because it's so easily available from supermarkets now. And it's still a great beer. And it's, a, it's a great beer. It's an absolute good... So, so, so that's where I'd finish. And, and, and one day, I hope that I will actually end up at Sierra Nevada. But there, I, I do feel like there's a couple of spin-offs 
this whole conversation tonight that we could have either as like whole shows as well like so that places you want to go to the fantasy bars because a lot of people generally went for bars the majority of people went for bars they've been to yeah which is all of mine and the majority of yours were bars we've been to and bars we have fond memory of, memories of whether it be the beers the bar the people the situation the venue the, the view or all, all of them all encompassed together I think it's been a fascinating journey actually it's been an amazing journey yeah and I love the way for part of our journeys we were both in the same area yes but not quite there not quite there we didn't cross over I had a few of yours you had a few of mine so yeah I'm quite quite happy the way that turned out it's been an amazing journey yeah I've enjoyed that and it's been accompanied by some some amazing beers, beers and yeah. some interesting beers all at the same time so okay we've had six beers from Brew York tonight yep put you on the spot favourite one Oh, that's a, that's a question. I'm going to go with the American Stout. I'm going to go for the first beer, the American Pale Ale. Is that because it was the first beer, because it was so refreshing? Could have been, but it's the beer which I would go back to straight away. I mean, the, the beer we're drinking now is the beer that started the conversation with Brew York. Oh, this it's is an amazing beer. It's thick, it's everything, but it's it's a beer that maybe i just want to sit on my own and enjoy for the evening without even really thinking about what i'm drinking it's almost just what, want to enjoy it's almost it. watching a whole film beer yeah one where you're not paying any attention to the beer because you're watching the whole film but you can just dip in and out of it you've had your dinner a couple of hours ago absolutely yeah you've missed out dessert this is dessert <laughs> it is a big thick old beer but so thank you very much again brew york for sending us those beers they've been absolutely fantastic so thank you very much Lee oh without a doubt and I'm looking forward to the next show where we're going to do a whole, whole another oh, load of brew yeah, beers another well. load of brew York. Oh, they are and there, there's a whole load of fruity stuff going on in that, that, that yeah. next I mean they are impressive beers they, they're great beers but again let's uh, let's come back to that conversation on 440 mil cans I'm not sure all of them need to be in 440 mils um, the first two lent themselves to 440s especially tonight with it being so warm these came out really cold out of the fridge yeah first half of it just went without us even having to talk about it or think about it I think from the stout onwards if you're not sharing and like we chose to share or not to share but we can share yeah doesn't mean you can always share on your own depending where you're buying it's, it's going to be quite an expensive purchase if you were trying to buy all 11 of those different beers very much so so, and going back to Rich's point earlier, also with some of the rarer beers, maybe you give people a few more options if you're in those three thirties. Yeah, what happens if you if you've not got someone to share it with? Yeah, so you want to really try it. This is a four forty would take a while. Yeah, on doesn't, your own doesn't make it any less of a beer. Let's let's be clear, it's a fantastic beer, really good beer, but it's a tough drink. To drink four four yeah, on your own. On your own. Yeah. Easily, yeah. What's coming up next? Next we have uh we're having a bit of summer break. We're we're at that point of the year, obviously. Um so the next show that you'll hear from us is The Lost Boys. Oh so it's, uh, opinions it's on film. Opinions on films. Uh bringing that back for the summer. And then after that we'll back to the shooter. shooter. Yeah, so you'll be back from your honeymoon. Um there's plenty of beer adventures to have been had between now and then. So let's uh, continue to enjoy the uh, mocker man, Randy Savage. Oh, yeah! And uh, wish everyone a great summer. Yeah, enjoy the summer break. Yeah, and cheers. Another night of someone